Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have a documentary-like type video for you guys. I haven't done a documentary like this in a long time. And also, for anybody waiting for lore videos, I do apologize. They just take me a lot of time to make, but just know I'm not slacking. I'm still making them. They just require a lot of time and effort, and just be patient with me, and I will have some great GTA lore videos um, for you guys up um, pretty much soon, probably in this week. But anyways... Uh, in this video, this documentary, we are going to be covering the stupid arguments that I typically hear. And I don't want to insult anybody when I say this, but a lot of these arguments are just ridiculous. They just don't make sense. And if you are a Red Dead player, or even if you're not a Red Dead player, but you know what happened to Red Dead Online, you know that Rockstar has abandoned Red Dead Online, which people still deny that Rockstar has abandoned Red Dead Online, when they pretty much have, they confirmed it on the Newswire. This video is not going to be me ranting about Red Dead Online. I am going to talk about some things that piss me off of Rockstar, but that's not going to be the main focus of this video. I'm not really going to be making rants like that anymore. Instead, in this video, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be breaking down all, a lot of the typical arguments that I hear. And these are arguments that I've heard from people in Twitter threads. These are arguments that I've seen in YouTube comments. These are even some arguments that I've seen from YouTubers. Now, not, now I will not be bringing up anybody's name in this because I don't do drama. I don't like drama. I'm not a toxic guy, but I will just be basically explaining these arguments that people make, and I'll be explaining in my own opinion, my opinion, like I said, on why I think these arguments are wrong. So we're going to be responding to the typical Reddit online has been abandoned because it's good for business. You guys heard this argument so many times. People saying, oh, you know, it's good what Rockstar did because Reddit online does not make them that much money. So it's good they abandoned Reddit online to focus on GTA online and GTA 6. That's the right business decision, right? Well, let's, let's counter that. Let's break this down then. I'm going to explain why I think that's wrong. And the purpose of this video is basically to try to have people think another way. If I can convince one person just one person, that that whole business argument is stupid and doesn't make sense, I'll consider this video a success. So anyways, let's start off this video here. The first and most common argument that I see is, like I said before, is that it's good for business that Rockstar abandoned Red Dead Online. I see this argument all the time. This is the most common anti-Red Dead Online argument. The argument typically goes of people trying to justify Rockstar's neglect and abandonment of Red Dead Online, saying it's not profitable, so from a business perspective, it makes no sense to support Red Dead Online. People typically argue that GTA Online has higher player counts and more copies sold. While this is true, GTA Online definitely has more players, and GTA 5 did sell more copies. I'm not denying that. It's that people deny why GTA Online is popular. I have heard the argument. People bought Red Dead Redemption 2 mainly for story mode, not for online. But is this not the same for GTA Online? When GTA Online was first coming out in 2013, I don't remember one person saying, I'm buying GTA 5 mainly for the online. I even stood in line for the midnight release. All people talked about was playing the single player and that they couldn't wait to play as Trevor, Franklin, and Michael. People bought GTA 5 mainly for the single player as well. But where am I going with this? The people that justify this argument ignore why GTA Online is popular. Why it has such high player counts versus Red Dead Online. They would claim to you that GTA Online is the better game. That's why it has more players. The reality is, both games aren't supported in the same way. They are made by the same company, but they're treated very differently. I don't like comparing GTA Online and Red Dead Online, as gameplay-wise, they're very different. But if you are going to compare them, don't just say, oh, Red Dead sucks. Instead, compare them in the content they receive. The reason GTA Online has higher player counts isn't because Red Dead Online sucks. The reason it has higher player counts is because it has way more content and constant updates. And this is the thing, I have seen these GTA Online fanboys pretend like GTA Online had all this content at launch, when in reality it didn't. In fact, one of the main selling points of GTA Online was heists. Let's take a look at the 2013 trailer. We're band together and form a crew. Then tackle a heist, rob a liquor store. GTA Online advertised heists, and heists did not come with the launch. They didn't come until a year and a half later. The GTA Online fanboys ignored a disastrous launch. 
GTA Online in 2013 had the worst servers. I spent all day playing. I grinded for my first apartment and car. And no, this is when contact missions paid much less than they do now. I got up to rank 18 in one day. The next day, I logged in and my character was deleted because of the garbage servers. The game had no content at launch. GTA Online launched in the exact same state Red Dead Online launched in. How? It was almost identical. The only argument you can make for, for the content was that GTA Online had a lot of vehicles. Sure it did, but Red Dead had a more detailed world, more features like cores, tonics, ability cards, animal hunting. So for the people that say that GTA Online still had more content at launch because it had a lot, a lot of vehicles, Red Dead Online and Red Dead Redemption 2 had just as much content but in other features, in the detail of the world, all the extra things that you could do. The reason I say both GTA Online and Red Dead online were the same was because we had terrible service on both games, we had almost no content, there was barely any content, all people on GTA Online did was grind contact missions, one being Rooftop Rumble where people on Reddit Online grinded Stranger Missions all day. These are the same as contact missions. The only difference is Stranger Missions were in public lobbies where contact missions would take you to a private lobby. When I tried to do races in GTA Online they sucked. No one would turn on contactless races, and people would just crash into each other over and over. The same thing happened Reddit Online. Reddit Online did not get its first major content until September 2019, almost a year later, where GTA got it a year and a half later. So what went wrong? If they both started out similar with little content, why did GTA Online get more popular? People would tell you it's because GTA Online is a modern crime game. Sure, that has some influence, and people buy GTA because it's the more well-known title. I understand that, but that's not the main reason. The real reason GTA Online got way more popular is because GTA Online had constant large updates, where Reddit Online didn't. Reddit Online never got the same chance that GTA Online got. This point that I'm making here is not an opinion, but it's a fact. I have the evidence right here. This is a chart that my friend Darkspace made. I want to give him full credit for this. He made an awesome, amazing chart. He's great at editing and makes some amazing videos. Check out his channel. I'll link him down below. But Darkspace made this chart as part of a video that he made talking about the state of Rockstar Games and Red Dead Online a few months ago. I helped him out with it. I explained to him a lot of the Red Dead Online updates and he put this chart together in, com in combination with the GTA updates. But anyways, Take a look at the chart, because this chart just shows you just the, the negligence that Red Dead Online received in comparison to GTA Online. GTA Online got a heist update, VIP update, CEO update, bikers update, import-export update, gun running update, smugglers run update, doomsday heist update, nightclub update, arena wars update, casino update, casino heist update, tuners update, Cayo Perico heist update, contract update, criminal enterprises DLC. Now I know what some people are going to say. Some people are going to say that some of these DLCs were coming out before Red, Red Dead Online was even out. I understand that. But if you look at how much content Red Dead Online has gotten, let's take a look at that. February 2019 update. May 2019 update. Frontiers Pursuits update. Moonshiners update. Naturalist update. Bounty Hunter expansion update. And Blood Money. That's it. Me? I don't have nothing to do with this bullshit Capitale. I just take it from you fools and hand it over to one of the Italians' goddamn pets. Italian only understands one thing, Capitale, and you ain't got enough. But would I ask you to do it for the sake of that considerable wealth and stock of Capitale? Right, Capitale then. You know, I've been thinking about the economics of the situation. So, Martelli and his cronies are trading this Capitale stuff among themselves. I mean, just the other night, a lady of negotiable affection asked me if I was paying in cash or Capitale. On some stacks of cash, and worryingly for them, Capitale. Tonight, and who knows? Probably some Capitale tucked in somewhere too. <laughs> Get some Capitale. So, dress, turn the place inside out and take whatever you damn well please. Including any capitale they got? Don't get the wrong idea. They sitting pretty on a nice little nest egg. Some capitale, too. Got your stinking capitale. Some of your damn capitale, too. 
You just gotta have the stomach to take it. It did not get any more support after that. There were a small tiny things in between such as telegram missions and survival that was added. But in terms of updates, if you compare that to Red Dead Online, it's clear that Red Dead Online was getting neglected and did not get the same attention nor the same care that GTA Online has gotten. Now to the people who defend Rockstar and say it's good for business that Red Dead Online got abandoned because GTA Online was making them more money and GTA Online is the more popular game. Let me ask you a question. Do you honestly believe the player counts for GTA Online would be the same as now if it did not have all these updates? Let's just say that the last update for GTA Online was the heist update, March of 2015. Do you honestly believe that GTA Online would still have the same player count right now if it did not have all those updates after the March 2015 update? Because I can tell you, it would not even have half of the, the player count. Anyone who tells you otherwise, anyone who tells you that GTA Online would still have the same amount of players if it didn't have all these updates is in denial. The main reason that these players came onto the game is because they knew that the game was getting big updates every six months. In the summertime, we get a decently sized update, but then in the wintertime, December, usually we would get a much bigger, massive update. And GT Online players knew that. They knew that every six months they were going to get an update, and they might take a break from the game for a few months, but they would come right back to the game. For Red Dead players, we were getting much smaller updates. We were not getting any kind of communication from Rockstar, and to be fair, they weren't communicating to GTA players either, but the GTA community was getting massive updates, Red Dead Online wasn't. And then, in December of, of, of 2021, when Reddit Online got no update, we didn't know what was going to happen. And then July of 2022, they say no more updates for the game. And if you don't believe me, you don't believe me that GT Online would not have the same player base if it didn't have all of these updates. Take a look at my poll right here. My poll pretty much proves this. I posted this, you know, almost two months ago. And basically, I asked people that were active GT Online players only to vote in this. I got 41,000 votes. And I asked people, you know, if G GT Online stopped in the March 2015 heist update, if it didn't have any more content after that, would you still play GT Online the same amount as now? And out of 41,000, 38% said, if GTA didn't have constant updates, I wouldn't have played as much. That's what they voted. 8% said, I still would have played GT Online the same amount as now. Only 8% of that 41,000 would have still played GT Online the same as as now if it didn't have all those updates and 54% said if GTA didn't have constant updates I would have stopped playing it so half of that more than 20,000 players in that poll have said that if GTA did not have constant updates they would have stopped playing now I know what some people are gonna say it's your community so of course they are going to agree with you but the thing is though is the vast majority of people that subscribe to my channel originally subscribed to me to GTA Online and you can go around asking tons of GTA Online players just ask them would you still play the game the same amount if it did not have constant updates and I guarantee you the majority of people say no I wouldn't have played played it anyone who sits there and would tell you that the game would still have the same player count as it as it does now if it didn't have all those updates is in denial or they're a massive fanboy or both so here i'm going to show you guys some statistics about reddit online and gt online and um, basically, uh, people have been using statistics a lot in these arguments to try to somehow justify Rockstar abandoning Reddit Online. And I've seen people use, um, you know, uh, Google Trends, which I'm on right now. And I've seen people also use Steam charts to try to reinforce their positions on this. And what I'll say about statistics is that statistics can always be used to try to prove certain points. Even like two opposing sides can use the exact same statistics to try to prove their point. Basically not showing certain points or trying to point to certain things in the, in the statistics. So there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of different ways to go about reading statistics. But I'm going to show you guys both sides of this, to be fair. And I'm going to show you guys what a lot of people also aren't showing you when it comes to the statistics of both Reddit Online and GTA um, Online. Now, I don't know whether the people that are 
posting these statistics to try to, you know, justify what Rockstar did. I don't know whether they're doing it on purpose, like, because there's certain things they're not showing you. I don't know whether they're doing it on purpose or whether they're just ignorant. That's not for me to judge, but I'm going to give you guys, you know, my thoughts on these statistics. Now, look, Google Trends is basically run by Google. This compares, like, search results for YouTube and, you know, Google on, you know, on on, on basically whatever you want to compare. And so I got Reddit, Reddit online in blue, and I got Grand Auto 5 in red. Now, if you take a look at this, this is the last year, you can see Grand Auto 5 is just destroying Red Dead, Red Dead Online in search results. There's pretty, on YouTube, you know, there's just no question about that. Grand Theft Auto 5 just has way more activity. And so people will point to this and they'll say to this, this is proof that Red Dead Online is a failure. However, though, what we do is, if we actually take a look at this right now, if we actually instead go to, um, I'm gonna go to December. So we'll go to December 1st, 2018, compare that to, to now. Now, the reason that's important is because that's when Reddit Online first came out. You're basically comparing it right when the game died. The last year, it did really bad. So if we compare it right here, it's still it's still really bad, but it's not. It's, it's a tiny bit better. But anyways, let's just take a look at web search. So web search is what people are searching on Google. So you can see, you know, 4 versus 24. And you have to understand that when Red Dead Online came out at this time, it was, you know, a brand new game. GTA 5 already had a dedicated player base that was playing the game, you know, constantly. And December 2018, you know, they had the Arena Wars update, which was a decently sized update, but wasn't a good one in my opinion, but that's another story. But anyways, um, uh, you guys see that um, GTA uh, 5 is still doing way better, you know, in both, uh, in both YouTube search and both um, web search. However, though, there's something wrong with these with this uh, chart. Now, what's wrong with it? The statistics aren't false. The, 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 the statistics here are actually correct. What is wrong here, though, what, what, or what I, what I should say what people aren't showing you, is the title. Look at this. Reddit Online, online game, comparing this Grand Auto 5 video game. Now, why is that wrong? The reason that that's wrong is because Grand Auto 5 is both the single player and the online. So somebody could be searching up, a ton of people could be searching up Grand Auto 5 for just single player stuff. Somebody could be searching up Grand Auto 5 for just, um, for just modding single player, you know, stuff like that. Or they could be searching Grand Auto Online. So you could be having both of those players searching for that thing at the same time. With Reddit Online, with that, you're just having people just search for Reddit Online. So this is not a fair comparison. When I see somebody compare Reddit Online to Grand Auto 5 on these, um, you know, these Google Trends, I don't think that that's a fair comparison. If you're going to compare Grand Auto 5 to Reddit Online, you're going to compare it instead Grand Auto 5 to Reddit Redemption 2, which is the full game, just like G GTA 5 is the full game. So let's take a look at that right here. And you guys see... It is, it is a very different story right here now. Very, very different when you compare this. And if you take a look at it, let's actually go back one month before this, because Red Dead Redemption 2 came out October 2018. So we'll just do November 1st, just to make it more simple. So November 1st, 2018. And take a look at this. Wow, look at that. Red Dead Redemption 2 was just destroying GTA in just web search results on this part here. It was just absolutely destroying it. And um, here, you know, search results did drop down. But take a look at this right here. Around this time, around this time, October, the search re the the search results for Reddit Redemption 2 went up by a lot. And why? Why do I think my personal opinion, this is my opinion, I don't have any you know, facts to back this up, but this the reason that I feel that the search results for Reddit Redemption 2 jumped a lot here is because around September 2019, around this time, is when we had gotten actually the um uh we had gotten the Frontiers Pursuits, which is the largest update that Reddit Online has ever gotten, you know, trader role, collector role, um, bounty hunter role. And so basically people played it for a little bit. And what happened was I think a lot of people were searching up guides and other things, and so that's why I think it jumped. And then next month, the Moonshiner DLC came out. Now, if we take a look at right here, right when Moonshiners came out, Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2 search results jumped also. Now, look, I know that people could be looking up Red Dead for Redemption 2 for single player, but you can't compare GTA 5 to Red Dead Online in the search results. We'll compare GTA Online and Red Dead Online in a little bit here. But, you know, see, GTA uh, 5 is still doing better, and the reason I think it was doing better here is because the Casino Heist came out around this time, and Casino Heist is just much a lo much larger update than Moonshiner. Moonshiner was still a great update, but Casino Heist was just generally, um, uh, you know, much larger update. And then May, you know, May around here, you know, Grand Theft Auto 5 peaked, you know, it did insanely well. And the reason that I think it did insanely well is because around this time, a lot of activity tends to happen around this time, summertime. People, you know, uh, finish up school, um, you know, they're going on, on break, people are taking a vacation from their jobs. And so activity on these video games always tends to happen, you know, um, uh, early summer to, you know, midsummer tends to be, you know, some of the greatest activity on the internet for that. Now, 
people were probably looking up the next GTA update. There was probably, you know, a bunch of clickbaiters. Remember remember when people kept doing the cops and crooks stuff and other, you know, other GTA clickbait. So I think that's probably what generated, like, a lot of search results on that. Um, and what ended up happening was in, um, uh, in uh, I think it was July, July of 2020, the Summer Special DLC came out, which people played, but it wasn't, you know, that good on Red on GTA 5. And then, you know, August, the Naturalist came out right around, um, right around this time. So you see that um, Red Dead Redemption 2's numbers actually increased a little bit right here, but Naturalist, even though it was a decently sized update, it wasn't a very um, interesting update, and so, you know, popularity fell in it. And then we compare it to December. The activity for Red Dead Redemption jumped in December, I think. It, it did increase. You know, went it went from, you know, 11 to about 14 right here. It was because people were waiting for the Bounty Hunter expansion. But the Bounty Hunter expansion was not that... Um, not that interesting. It was basically the same old what we've gotten. You look at Red Dead Redemption 2, and you see right here that it, um, you look at GTA, I'm sorry. You look at GTA, and you see the numbers have increased a lot, because GTA got a map expansion. You got Cayo Perico, and then right here, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2 just had a decline, and it just never really fully recovered here, and that was because of, you know, the, the lack of updates, the lack of support for the game. People got let less interested in the game. They got pissed off at Rockstar not supporting the game, but let's take a look at, you know, YouTube search. YouTube search is going to be a little bit different. So YouTube search for Grand Theft Auto 5 is just is much better. I want to show you guys both statistics to be fair. But uh, you guys see Grand Theft Auto 5 is generally searched more on YouTube because and the reason for that, the reason that I think GTA 5 generates, you know, more views on YouTube is because it is a little bit it is more of a popular game. I will concede that I'm not going to deny that. But also because there's so many GTA channels out there. There's GTA channels that clickbait that generate a lot of views. There's other good GTA channels out there that also get a decent amount of views and don't clickbait. But the point is, there's so many GTA channels. You know, there's honest GTA channels. There's clickbaity GTA channels. Um, you know, there's grinding channels. There's PvP channels. There's just so many of them out there. But how many Red Dead channels do you know out there? There really are not that many Red Dead channels out there. There are great Red Dead content creators. Don't get me wrong. But there are not that many Red Dead um, uh, content creators. If you compare it to GTA, there's just way more GTA content creators than there is Red Dead content creators. So that's personally why I think the view count is just um, uh, so much more uh, significant. But if you know, if you look at web search, people searching up on the web, you know, it is um, more comparable here. But also another reason that the views are actually much, um, another reason that the views have actually dropped. If you notice that there was actually people were looking up Red Dead Redemption 2 right when it came up, but then the views dropped, especially on YouTube. Like it fell, it fell by a lot. And if we look at web search, compare this exact same time to web search here. Yeah, so... So look at this. So web search was not as bad as the YouTube search around that time. And the reason that I think the web search fell really badly here is because of YouTubers. That's precisely why for Red Dead Redemption 2. Why, why would web search results fall because of YouTubers? The reason for that is because people don't want spoilers. That's the reason. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the longest games that I've ever played in my life. It's a very long game. It's like a 40-hour game in total. And if you do all these side activities, you're going to have like hundreds of hours of just content to do. But the point is that a lot of YouTubers spoil stuff. Whenever new video games come out, YouTubers spoil stuff. They put um, thumbnails of characters dying, titles. And so a lot of people shut themselves off from YouTube completely just so they don't have the game ruined for them. Like I had like, I had like basically like around that time, I had like a few thousand people actually unsubscribe from me. And then I actually had people subscribe to me back um, uh, right when uh, right when they finished Red Dead Redemption 2, like a few months later, and I've seen people's comments, you know, I unsubscribed because I didn't want to see Red Dead spoilers, but I don't spoil stuff. But, you know, people, I guess, unsubscribed from me also because, because they didn't want to get recommended other potential channels that could spoil stuff. So that, that's personally what I feel about that. But we're not done comparing these statistics. What we're going to do right now is we're going to compare Red Dead Online here to GTA Online, because I think that that is the more um, fair comparison here to make. And there's a few other things that's a little bit different about this, which I'll show you guys right now. Hang on a second here. Grand Total Online. Okay, so this is going to be pretty bad also, I'm assuming. Um, but take a look at this. So this is, you know, uh, this is around that time, you know, 11, 1, 18. And you can see right here around this time, Reddit Online actually passed GTA Online for a little bit in YouTube search. And we do, um, uh, we do web search here. Let's see here. Web search. So you see... GTA, um, Red, Reddit Online actually did pass it. And if we just go by web search here, you can see that Reddit Redemption 2, Reddit Online, 
did not do horrible. It didn't. I wouldn't say that it, it did. It did amazing. Sometimes it did really bad, but other times, you know, it was pretty close to GTA. Like right around here, the May 2019 update came out, so we actually had an update on Reddit Online around that time. People were waiting for it. We had the Jessica Leclerc missions. You know, we had poker, and so Reddit Re Online jumped a little bit here. Um, here, right, uh, right around here, uh, what happened? You had the Casino DLC came out. Casino DLC came out in July on GTA, and you had no um, update on Reddit Online at the time. But then, you know, September, you had Frontiers Pursuits come out, and so Reddit Online jumped again. And if Rockstar kept this up, they kept this up right here, this could have gone higher. This could have gone, I think this this honestly could have gone higher. But what happened was November, December 20, uh, 2019, we had Moonshiners, which also rose. You see, from November, it rose from a score of 6 to a score of 11 because people were searching up Moonshiner. They were excited for that. Now, to be fair, GTA had the um, uh, had the casino heist at that time. So, you know, it was, it was the larger update. It was more popular. But if Rockstar kept this track going right here, I think that the game could have done well. But you see here, now the game struggles at this point. Struggling, struggling, struggling. And r this is there was no update, no communication from Rockstar at whatsoever. People got on, um, you know, the summertime, had their vacation coming up. GTA does do really popular in the summertime, not going to deny that. Um, but then here, Naturalist came out. Naturalist came out and it jumped. It jumped from four, a score of four, to a score of 14. So half of what GTA um, Online had. And then right here, December, you know, like I said, it was the, um, it was the Bounty Hunter expansion. But then afterwards, just look at these scores. It just... It, it increased a little bit here because Blood Money came out, and I, it doubled. from It went from 6 to 12 of Blood Money. The reason for that was because people were really hoping that we'd get a good update. They really were excited for the Blood Money DLC. Blood Money was announced, I think it was like May, and then, and then it came out in July of 2021, and people really thought we were going to get robberies, but we didn't get robberies. And so after that, it never made a recovery. It didn't, and see, it just keeps going down and down and down. Jumped a little bit here, you know, at, at the right at the end of the year, you know, tends to happen in, a little bit of increased activity, but just falling, 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 falling. So th the point that I'm making here, I know I'm talking a lot about these statistics, guys, is that GTA had, you know, a, a trend of just updates uh, coming out. And Reddit, Reddit Online was not getting that same treatment. If they kept up this same treatment right here, this was on a good pace. You have to remember, GT Online also started out with barely any updates, barely any content, and it did not become the game it is today until all of the updates um, were releasing for it. Until at least, at least until I would say, probably the CEO update, the CEO update around there, 2016. You know that was one of the golden years of GT Online. You had the um, CEO office update June 2016. You had the um, bikers update October 2016 import export update uh, uh, 2016 and if we actually take a look at that um we take a look at this here let's just take a look at this i know that red dead online did not exist in um uh, red dead online did not exist at that um uh, at that time in 2016 but we'll just take a look at what gta was at 2016 here so look let's see here where is this here So this is right here, YouTube search results for GTA, um, uh, GTA Online, and this is for, um, uh, you know, CEO update came out, and then you had the bikers update come out, you had, you know, um, a, a lot of people were working around this time, but it's still like, it still went up. And then, you know, we had import-export come out, and so it got popular. You disregard this down here because Reddit Online was not out at this time. But also, there's another thing about these statistics, guys, is when people are searching up, and I'll show you the web search also, but when, pe when people are searching up, like, um, uh, when they're searching up these, uh, these games a lot of times, how many people do you know that actually search up, like, Grand Theft Auto Online? Like, it's just... Um, and how many people do you know that search up like Red Dead Online? You know, most people that I know that are in the Red Dead community, they either search up RDO or Red Dead Online. Now, RDO has some, you know, doesn't have the, um, uh, uh, it can be, you know, be, I guess, a, a little bit of a vast term. But then we take a look at, uh, let's do GT Online. That's, you know, what most people search up here. So you see, RDO is not searched, um, uh, RDO is not searched up that much. But now let's take a look at one other thing. Let's take a look instead at Red Dead, because Red Dead is like a vague term. Um, a lot of players, a lot of people in the Red Dead community, we just call it Red Dead, you know, when we're searching it up, you know, just for short. Uh, because, you know, how many people do you know that call it Grand Theft Auto Online? You know, we compare that, and uh, let's, let's change this. Let's do past 12 months here. So, uh, Red Dead. Okay. 
So look at this. The, now, now, now this is starting to get a lot different. When you actually put the search results Red Dead and you put in the search results GTA Online, this is what people typically search. It is, it is a bit different here. There are times when GT Online is doing better, but there's times when Red Dead is being searched. Now, Red Dead, like I said, this can be searched for both the single player and the online. I get that, but a lot of Red Dead Online players will just search Red Dead. Um, RDO is not as common as GT Online. Like, more people say Red Dead instead of RDO, uh, but that that is, you know, another way to look at these statistics. So the point that I'm making is that both people are right. When you have like, when you have these people that try to, you know, say that, that Reddit Online is failing and they show you these statistics, it is true to an extent because Reddit Online was doing really bad because it just had less player interest in it because there was just no updates coming out. However, though, they're comparing, for example, you know, GTA 5 um, uh, to Red Dead Online, which GTA 5 is obviously going to have more search results. But if you compare Red Dead Redemption 2 to GTA 5, it's different. And if you compare, you know, Red Dead to GTA Online, it is a bit different here. Um, so this can be, you know, both single player and the online, but let's take a look one final thing here. And, I, and I'm sorry to spend so much time on the statistics here, guys, but I just see so many people bring up these statistics also, and I wanted to give my opinion. You know, feel free to disagree with me, but, you know, you can search up all these statistics, these same statistics that I have searched up here. And if we take a look right here, wow, so yeah, Red Dead, like I said, look at this, Red Dead compared to just GT Online search terms, <laughs> Red Dead was just doing much, much better here. And so there's some, um, you know, times Red Dead is, um, uh, is doing better, other times where GTA is doing much better, and then kind of like in the middle right here. Uh, so that's, you know... Like I said, I know Red Dead is a vague term, but, you know, most people on Red Dead Online community, we just say Red Dead. So that's pretty much, you know, my thoughts on the statistics. But let me show you guys now the Steam charts. And here I wanted to show you guys one more thing just to be fair to both sides with Google Trends. So take a look at this right here. So like I said, I had Red Dead as a search term and um, GTA 5 as a search term. Most Red Dead players, when they search Red Dead, whether it's for the online or the single player, they're just going to search Red Dead. Most GTA players, whether it's for the online or the single player, when they search stuff, they're just going to type in GTA 5. You know, people don't feel like typing in the whole thing. I'm kind of lazy also. I don't feel like typing in the whole thing. Most of us, you know, we use these terms when we're looking up the games, whether it's for single player or the online. But, you know, if we take a look at these, like, you know, on YouTube, like I said, the YouTube search results... And uh, we'll do, um, uh, we will do actually, uh, you know, the previous one we had, we'll have like, um, we'll just have like, um, uh, we'll have 12, 01, 2018. Look, we take a look at this. Like I said, you know, YouTube, Red Dead does not do good on YouTube. I, I understand that. I get that. But my personal opinion on that is I believe that it's because there are not that many Red Dead channels as there are GTA channels. There's just much more GTA channels. And a lot of the more popular Red Dead channels are typically for the single player. Like there's a lot of people that actually just do single player content. But if we take a look at web search, because web search is where I think it's more important personally, in my opinion, we see that Red Dead and GTA are not that, um, you know, very extremely far apart. There's times where Red Dead has actually beaten GTA, like this one time here. Like I said, um, this is like, you know, a little bit after Frontier's Pursuits came out, like leading up to the Moonshiners DLC. But Red Dead, on, uh, Red Dead compared to this GTA 5, is like, you know, a search result, it's not doing horrible. It's not, you know, people act like it's doing horrible. It's not doing horrible. It's not, I wouldn't say it's doing amazing, but it's not doing horrible. Generally, it's like half of what GTA has or a little bit of under that. And so, you know, it's like I said, if they kept up this trend, like if they kept up this trend that they had like um, here's late, uh, late, uh, late 2019, they could have, you know, gotten this game more in popularity, but it, it fell. And, you know, G it didn't fall because, because of the, um, uh, because the game sucked. It just fell because there's no content for the game. If you have no content for the game, your players are not going to play the game. It's as simple as that. This sa exact same thing that happened to Reddit Online, this exact same thing would have happened to GT Online if it did not have these um, these updates, that it, that all these updates. And if, it, if somebody tells you otherwise, that GTA still would still have the same views, like I said earlier, they're in denial. Because the reason GT Online was getting more popular is because of the constant updates that was constantly coming out in the game. That's pretty much it. And, you know, m my point is that if so many people are 
searching up the single player for Red Dead Redemption 2 because that's very popular. A single player is very popular. You have 45 million copies sold of this game. You know, don't tell me that a game that sold 45 million copies can't have a successful online mode as well. It just Rockstar chose not to develop it. Um, but that's pretty much it covering the Google Trends. I try to be fair to both sides, but like when I see people using these these um, uh, these these trends, like and they're trying to like show that th that Reddit Online is like you know sucks and that GTA um, Online is like the superior game and everything like that, and this shows that you know Red Dead deserves to be killed. I disagree. It's like I said, you can search what you want. You can change up the search results. Use Red Dead Redemption. Um, you can use Red Dead Redemption um, 2 versus um, uh, GTA Online. You can use um, uh, you can use Red Dead Online versus GTA 5, which that's not a fair. Um, uh, I don't think that's a fair comparison. But it's like I said, statistics can be used in different ways to try to push different arguments. But I showed you guys both sides. You guys make up your mind on what you think of the statistics. But I wanted to give uh, you know a fair analysis of both sides there. Um, I'm more, more in favor of Red Dead Online, obviously. But you know I'm showing even when Red Dead Online doesn't do good, I still showed. I don't hide that from you guys. Um, but now let's move on to the uh, Steam charts here. Now the Steam charts, um, uh, this is a, you know another statistic. I'm going to go over this really quick because there really isn't that much to cover here. But Steam charts, this shows how many you know active players there are on the PC version of G of Red Dead Online and of GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2. Now people, I, I've actually seen people actually try to use this statistic right here. Like this is just from 35 minutes ago, but it says 2008 players. Now if you compare this to GTA, GTA 5 is destroying it really badly. And so I see people like Link this and they link this and then they say like oh this is proof that Red Dead sucks it doesn't even have 10% of the players that GTA um, 5 has however though this is a false um, uh, false comparison right here this is just uh, this is either somebody being really ignorant or just um, uh, or deliberately manipulating um, uh, the way the statistics are showed what I mean by this is look it's the same thing as what uh, previously we had Red Dead Online versus GTA 5 there is no standalone for GTA Online on the PC there isn't. There's only GTA 5. Red Dead Online has a standalone for PC. And so Red Dead Online standalone players and Red Dead Redemption 2 players are counted differently in separate charts. That means that somebody could have a copy of Red Dead Redemption 2 and they could get on the online and they won't be counted on here. Instead, they'll be counted on the other chart. Do you get what I mean? So this is only for people that are playing the Red Dead Online standalone. So that's why I say that it's misleading when people compare this to this. And this is also comparing the single player and the online. It's comparing the single player and the online. So, you know, when people say that, like, the vast majority of people are playing Red Dead Redemption 2 just for single player, we don't know how many people are playing single player for GTA 5 as well. Now, let's look at Red Dead. Red Dead Redemption 2, 13,904 people playing 38 minutes ago. If we add that to 2,008 players, um, that is about 16,000 players playing 38 minutes ago. That's a combination of both single player and online, but that's the total amount of people that are on PC that are on Red Dead Redemption 2. That is more of a comparison to this, to comparing it to Grand Theft Auto 5 of the total people on both PC, um, uh, on single player and the online. So when I see people, you know, use this Red Dead Online statistic, this just this standalone, and they say this is like, you know, proof that the game's a failure, um, you know, 2,000 people playing it, this is just for the standalone version. Most people that play online have the single player also and they play both the single player and the online. And so you can't just compare this Red Dead Online standalone. When GTA Online does not even have its own standalone, it's GTA 5 is just one thing here on the PC. But, you know, we look at that 16,000, you know, players compared to, you know, 63,000, you know, um, uh, players, you know, how much is that? That's, you know, that is around 20% of the players that are playing GTA 5, which is not horrible. You know, Red Dead Redemption 2 is still a popular game, you know, not many, not many games get this many players playing, you know, 39 minutes ago, so this is really good. So there are a lot of developers that would love to have, like, a, a, a game in a community like Red Dead, um, uh, like Red Dead Online. And also, guys, a little bit more on the statistics. I thought that I would add this in here um, to show you guys this, but this is actual my on my channel personally. Now, I've done a lot of Red Dead content over the years. I've studied with the game since day one, and I'll show you guys this. My Red Dead Online videos were actually doing really good, really good back in the day. They were. And my Red Dead Online videos do not do nearly as good as they do today. Why is that? Is it because Red Dead Online just sucks and just GT Online is the better game? No. It's like I said, because Red Dead Online has lost a lot of its players, because people have uh, gotten 
less interested in the game. The developer has completely abandoned the game. They've admitted to it, and they're just not listening to the community. So people are getting pissed off, and they stop playing this game. But at this this time, when I have it, I have, you know, title contains Reddit Online. You see right here. And I have, like, you know, views on my channel. This is just Reddit Online content, and this is some of my most popular content. And if you notice, there's a pattern. My most popular Red Dead content tends to be from late 2019 to early 2020. That's my most popular Red Dead content. And the, the content that doesn't get that many views is typically right when the game started out because there wasn't much content or right around now. So see, I made a Red Dead Online Ultimate Beginner's Guide. Got 874,000 uh, uh, views it's almost three years ago. And this video is going to hit a million. This video will hit a million views eventually. I don't know when, but I predict it will hit a million views. Red Dead Online Ultimate Moonshiner Guide, how to make money with the moonshine business, 618,000. Um, views and the like ratio is pretty good, like 97.4% uh, likes, 18,000 likes, 13,000 likes. Ultimate Bounty Hunter Guide, you see 596,000 views. Uh, this is, you know, this was a documentary I made in December about how Rockstar killed Reddit Online. 570,000 views. That was just that was just people that were pissed off with the state of Reddit Online is. So this video was actually made, um, you know, last December, and this shows that plenty of people still care about Reddit Online. You know, they're not playing the game, but they, they stopped to check out my documentary on it. And I wonder how many people are going to watch this documentary. This documentary might be really popular as well, um, because people are just pissed at Rockstar. While they're not looking at videos of the game themselves, you know, they're unhappy with the state of the game. So they're more inclined to watch a video like a documentary explaining how Rockstar betrayed the community. But look at this one, Reddit Online Ultimate Trader Guide, 551,000, you know, 12,000 likes. And look, at my, my videos are generally have like a 97% like average like ratio, like people really like it. I did a video, what happens if you capture a wanted player and take them to jail? And that was like, that was not clickbait. It was all act. You can actually do that in Reddit Online. There is RPG elements. Just, if Rockstar focused on stuff like this, like RPG elements and added, it kept adding them to the game, you know, being able to role play like a bandit and stuff like that, this game would have been a massive success. It would have. But you cannot sit there and blame Reddit Online and say that Reddit Online was like doomed to fail when Rockstar was the ones that caused the failure. Reddit Online was never doomed to fail from the start. Reddit Online had potential. It's that the developer chose not to develop the game. An ultimate collector's guide, you know, 401,000, um, uh, you know, views, you know, 8,000, um, 8,483 likes, 1,000 comments. So you see, like, like I, I'm not going to name any more of these videos, but you guys see, these videos are very popular. You know, these have hundreds of thousands of views. You know, hundreds of thousands of views on, these, on some of this Red Dead content. So the point is, Red Dead had the potential to be a popular game. If I have people, hundreds of thousands of people watching my Red Dead content, you can't sit there and tell me that this game did not have potential. If, if we were to listen to these arguments of these people, they were saying that, that this game was not popular, nobody ever cared about this game, nobody plays this boring cowboy Wild West game where you ride around your horse, I hear people say this all the time, then these videos would not even have half the views that they have right now. Why do these, some of these videos have over half a million views? They're very popular and people like them. These guys help people out because they're still... There was an active community that played Reddit Online. There still is to an extent, but the community used to be much larger and had potential. And Rockstar chose not to capitalize on that potential, and they instead chose to abandon the game. So for people that say Reddit Online never had potential, look at my YouTube videos. Look at how popular they were. This is when Reddit Online was at its height, when people were actually happy with the updates we got. They liked the Moonshiner. They liked the Frontier's Pursuit. This was not until the disaster came later on. Get the damn cash. You know, Tommy... I did what I could for you. I pulled strings, called in favors. I was your friend, Tommy. I hoped you'd see sense, see what's good for business. I trusted you, Tommy, and you disappointed me. But at least someone in your chicken shit organization knows how to do business. Isn't that right, Lance? I'm sorry, Tommy. This is Vice City. This is business. <laughs> you sold us out. No. I sold you out, Tommy. I sold you out! The real cash is upstairs in the safe. And now we move on to the next part of the documentary. And that is comparing the business argument to anything else is a disaster. And what I mean by this is that if you compare this business argument, this argument, like I said, that people make when they say that Rockstar is justifying in abandoning Reddit Online because Reddit Online does not turn the same type of profit as GTA Online, so it makes sense to focus those resources on GTA Online and on GTA um, 6 instead. If you take this exact same argument and you apply it to pretty much anything else, you'll see just how bad this argument is. 
What I mean by that is let's talk about, for instance, Burger King, the fast food restaurant. And I'm going to use multiple examples, so don't think I'm just going to use the fast food restaurant. But imagine going into Burger King. You go into Burger King, you go up to the counter, and you say to the guy, hey, um, I'd like to get a fish sandwich. And you don't see the fish sandwich on the menu. And they say, oh, sorry, sir, we don't carry the fish sandwich anymore. And you ask them why. And they say, oh, well, you know, the fish sandwich isn't as profitable as the Whopper. The Whopper makes us the most amount of money. So we decided to focus resources on making more Whoppers instead. And we canceled out the fish sandwich. Do you know how stupid that would be if that actually happened? You know, and I'm one of those people that actually buys the fish sandwich. I actually like the fish sandwich. If that happened to me... If I encountered a situation like that, do you know what I would say at that point? I'd say, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to go to McDonald's instead, and I'm going to buy a filet o fish and, and eat there. And look, I know that Reddit Online does not have any competitors. I get that. Um, but, you know, I don't count GTA is even really a comparable game to it. You know, I only compare them in content because it's the same developer, the content size. But this idea and what Rockstar is basically, Rockstar's logic is they think that these Reddit Online fans are somehow all going to just jump on GTA Online and start buying shark cards and GTA Plus. That is preposterous. I'm not going to deny that some Red Dead players would start playing GTA, but a lot of Red Dead players play Red Dead because they want to get away from GTA Online. They want to get away from the craziness and nonsense in GTA Online. They like the slow-paced world of Red Dead Online. They like, you know, the chill atmosphere. They like the Wild West setting. You know, they like the horses. They don't like seeing futuristic vehicles. I'm not trying to diss GTA Online here, but I'm just saying is there's reasons that people play Red Dead Online over GTA Online. I talked to a lot of Red Dead players who tell me, you know, things that they don't like about GT Online and why they play Red Dead Online. So there's a reason that people come to this game and there's a reason that they play. This idea that they're all going to start playing GT Online now because Rockstar canceled Red Dead Online is absolute nonsense. And as for, you know, the, the whole fish sandwich argument, what I say about that is there's a reason that these fast food restaurants carry the fish sandwich. Why do you think so? Why do you think some of these fast food restaurants even carry salads around, even though salads barely make a profit for them? Why do they still do that? You ever hear anybody care buying a salad for a fast food place, but why do they still have them on the menu in a lot of places? The reason they still have them on the menu is simple, because it diversifies their income and people still buy them. Yes, people still buy the fish sandwich, even though it's not as popular as the burgers. The Whopper is the most popular burger in, Bur in Burger King, but people still buy the fish sandwich. And just like in McDonald's, you know, the WAP, the Big Mac is the most popular burger there, but people still buy the, the, uh, people still buy the filet fish So there are, these are other, other sandwiches that aren't as popular, but yet they still sell. They still turn a profit. People still buy them. It diversifies their customer base. By eliminating the fish sandwich in that example, those customers are going to go and eat somewhere else. Some of them might sit down and have a Big Mac and have a Whopper instead of having the fish sandwich when it's canceled. I'm not going to deny that. But a lot of them are just going to you know, say, screw this. I came in because I wanted to eat my fish sandwich. And you're going to tell me you're not selling it anymore because it's not profitable anymore. I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. And they have now lost that customer. They have lost a, a longtime regular customer. And I'm going to talk about this um, a little bit later. But this is why I think that Reddit Online should have still been developed, even if the even if the game wasn't turning that much of a profit because it's about retaining those customers. But anyways, um, you, if you don't like the whole, you know, Burger King, you know, um, comparison that I made there, compare this to another example. Let's, let's talk about the phone store, for instance. You go to a phone store. You say that you want to buy an Android phone. And when you go in the, in the store, all the Android phones are gone. There's nothing but iPhones there. And you're like, what the, what's going on? And you ask the guy, hey, can I see some Androids? And they say, oh, sorry, you know, uh, sir, we don't carry the Androids anymore. We discontinued them um, because the iPhone is the most profitable phone and it, it makes us the most amount of money. So we're focusing on just selling iPhones from now on. And do and you know how stupid that would be? You have, there's plenty of fans of Androids. There's so many people that don't like iPhones and they like Androids. And this is coming from somebody who uses the iPhone. There's plenty of, people that do not like iPhones. They only use Androids and nothing else. And even though, you know, iPhone might be more uh, profitable, it might sell much more than Androids in a lot of cases, the Androids still generate a profit for those phone companies. It diversifies their customers, basically, because instead of having just iPhone customers coming into your store, you're having iPhone and Android customers. Even if the Android customers are only 20% of your customers and the iPhone customers are 80% of your customers, you're still attracting an extra 20%. You're attracting those, I, those Android customers to your store. By canceling out the, uh, the Android phones, you're, those Android customers are going to go to another store and buy an Android. You think they're just going to stop and buy an iPhone? No, they came in to buy an Android. And that's the whole point. You apply this same argument, you know, canceling out something else to focus on something else in a business and it turns into a giant disaster. You ever wonder why so many stores carry around items that don't sell as much as the other ones? Because people still buy them, and they come in and they still generate some kind of profit. Even if it isn't as much as the main item, they are still purchased. 
And for these YouTubers that constantly defend Rockstar killing off Reddit Online, saying that it's good for business, you know, why don't they apply that exact same logic to their channels? And what do I mean by that? For instance, why don't they cancel their merchandise? Note, I'm not telling them to cancel their merchandise. They can do whatever they want. It's their channel. It's not telling anybody what they can and can't do. But I'm just using their own logic against them. Think about it this way. Merchandise makes YouTubers much less money than what they make from ad revenue. Ad revenue is where they get the majority of their money from. Merchandise, they don't really get that much money from it. They make a profit, sure. But they don't make that much money in comparison to ad revenue and also promoting items. So then according to that same logic... Instead, they, these YouTubers should just cancel their merchandise, and instead they should just focus on just making YouTube videos, focus on just making ads. But they don't do that. And do you know why? You know why they don't do that? Because they know that with that merchandise, even if they aren't making that much money from it in comparison to their ad revenue, they know they are diversifying their income. They're getting income from different sources. And it's never a good idea to have your entire income based on one source. That's why I personally think everybody should always diversify their income. Because if you're dependent entirely on one source and then something goes wrong with that source, you don't have anything to fall back on. But with diversified income, you have something extra to fall back on. Now, I know I'll have some people that will tell me, that, oh, you know, the merchandise doesn't take that much work to do. They can just they can just make some drawings, put it on some cups, and then they can sell it. You can't really compare that. Well, what about shorts then? If you don't like that example, what about YouTube shorts? YouTube shorts take some time and effort to make. Some of them are very easy to upload, but others, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube shorts that are pretty, um, uh, I, would, I, I would think, require a lot of editing and a lot to put together. And so these shorts don't generate any money. There's no ad revenue on YouTube shorts. But then why do YouTubers still make YouTube shorts if there's no ad revenue? Do you know why they do it? Because shorts are oftentimes very popular. They explode in views. And even if they aren't making any money from that short, they're making money in different ways. Because what it's doing is, even though the short itself is not making any ad revenue, the short itself of all the views that it's attracting is helping the algorithm, and it's also attracting more viewers to their channel. So it's increasing traffic. And those people are more likely to subscribe to that YouTuber, and they're more likely to check out that other YouTuber's content, watch their videos, and then the ads will pop up and they'll make money from that. So, you know, according to these same YouTubers logic, when they're saying that it's, you know, it's good for business for Red Dead Online to be abandoned because Rockstar should just focus on, you know, GTA Online and GTA 6, well, you know, then according to that same logic, cancel merchandise and just focus on just making uh, YouTube videos, you know, cancel shorts, you know, you shouldn't put that much effort into shorts making them, and instead you should just put that effort into making YouTube videos and just um, putting up ads. No, I don't believe this, what I'm saying right here, but I'm just using that exact same logic against them. This is just the ridiculousness of it, and so people, you know, constantly talk with this business argument, but in my opinion, a lot of times, they don't know what they're talking about. And this leads me to my next point, which is diversification of income. Now, diversification of income, what is this exactly and why is it so important, especially to Reddit Online? Diversification of income is basically having income from multiple sources, not being totally dependent on one income. And the people defending Rockstar canceling Reddit Online, they only look at numbers for GT Online and Reddit Online. They don't think of it as diversified income. And these people, like I said, they don't understand what diversified income is and how it's relevant here. But basically, what I mean by this is these people look at the numbers and they see that GT Online, you know, has way more players playing it and they see that GT Online is making more money. And so in their eyes, you know, like I said, they try to justify Rockstar's, you know, abandonment of Reddit Online and they say that, oh, you know, it's good for business because you, and it makes sense to transfer, you know, resources so that Rockstar can develop GTA Online and GTA 6, and because it makes them the most money. Now, look, what I'll say about this is this argument could only work under two circumstances, and none of these circumstances are here. The first one is, this argument about shifting resources would only work if Rockstar did not have those resources, but they have those resources. If Rockstar was like a small developer with not that much support, then yeah, I could see that. I could see why they would work on, you know, their their bigger game. But Rockstar, this is a company that has over a billion dollars. This is one of the richest video game companies out there. You cannot tell me that they don't have the resources to develop both GTA Online and Red Dead Online. That is absolute nonsense. They do have the resources. They're just choosing not to. That's it. Now, the second reason that this, that this argument does not work is because shifting resources to GTA Online... Um, abandoning Reddit Online would only work on the other occasion is if the vast majority of Reddit Online players jumped on GT Online 
but that's not going to happen. Like I said before, the vast majority of Red Dead Online players are getting pissed off. They're just not playing the game. They're going to play something else. And some might play GTA Online. I'm not going to deny that. Some might buy shark cards. But this idea that the vast majority of the Red Dead community is going to go on GTA Online and start, you know, buying shark cards and GTA Plus is absolute nonsense. They have lost a huge amount of their player base. You know, this game has, you know, sold 45 million copies. And while Red Dead Online's numbers aren't great, you know, there's... a ton of people own this game, so it's not like people are just selling this game to GameStop. People keep this game mainly for the single player, and they play the single player a lot, and they come back to this game every so often. So if Rockstar actually developed the online and put effort into it, you would see these player player numbers increase because, like I said, so many people have it just for the single player alone, and when they know there's more content coming in the online, they're much more likely to play the online as well. And in regards to diversification of income, the reason that this is so important for Reddit Online is because Rockstar is a very unique product here. They have an open world, wild west game that's online with a very detailed map, one of the most detailed open world maps I've seen, and not only one of the most detailed open world maps I've seen, one of the largest open world maps I've seen. Is there any other product like Reddit Online out there? Think about it. Is there something out there like another open world wild west online game where players, tons of players can meet up? I'm sure there's something probably like that on the PC, but there's nothing like that really on the consoles. So Reddit Online really has no competitors. It's a very unique product and has attracted a very unique community to it. And like I said, 45, this game has 45 million copies sold. There there's potential there. There's potential to grow the online. There's potential to grow the player numbers. And Rockstar, by having Reddit Online as a product, they have a unique product and they're diversifying their income because they're making money from Reddit Online and they're making money from GT Online at the same time. They got two products. Now, the reason that diversification of income is important, people look at GT Online and they say, oh, you know, this, this game makes more money, so let's just do that, you know, ignore Reddit Online. The reason diversification of income is important is because you're not totally dependent on one source. Rockstar has basically made themselves almost entirely dependent on money from GT Online. And while GT Online at its moment is generating them tons of money, think about this to yourself. How much more content can they really make on GT Online? Rockstar has added so many properties to that game that eventually they're going to run out of space to have properties and missions. Like pretty much every single alley, every single street has some form of mission, whether it's a heist prep, a contact mission, a business cell mission. There's a so many, um, so much land that's also being lost in GT Online because there's already other things there. So it's not like they can just keep constantly adding as many properties as they want to GT Online. The only way they could do that is if they do a map expansion, but I can't really picture them. So eventually Rockstar is going to run out of content on GT Online. It's eventually going to happen. And the reason it's it's totally bad to have yourself dependent on one source of income is because if that source of main source of income something goes wrong, then you're pretty much screwed at that point. Think about it this way, you know, if you are, you know, you're working a job and you're also doing something on the side to make money. If you get fired from that job, you have that side thing that, you know, you could fall back on. You know, why do you think why do you think a lot of people do Uber Eats and DoorDash? Because they diversify their income. They have an extra source of income besides their main job. So they have something else to fall back on and they have some extra income coming in. And they save up that income in case it's a rainy day, in case it's something bad, in case they're, they get fired from their job, you know, their job closes down, if their business falls apart, business is slow, whatever other bad circumstances. That's why it's bad to be dependent on one source of income. I don't know why it's so hard for people to understand this. I try to tell people, these people all the time, that diversified income is good. And I think diversified income is so important that I think every single person, every single working person on this planet, I think should have some form of diversified income. That's why I, that, I truly believe that. I think if everybody had some form of diversified income, they'd be in a much better state because you're not totally dependent on just one thing. And for example, take me. I run a rental property as well. I, 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 some of you guys might know that because I talked about, about it a bit on my streams, but yes, I run a rental um, a property business. You know, I currently have one rental, but I, you know, want to get another rental in the future. And so this is, you know, a property, this is a home that, you know, it, this was, you know, a lot for me to, you know, get into. This was, you know, a pretty big investment. The largest investment that I'd ever made in my life was, you know, starting up this rental property business. So I had to put a lot of, you know, uh, money into this project. And when I started up my rental, um, uh, you know, business, you know, I don't make as much money from it as I do for my YouTube channel. I don't, you know, the vast majority of my money still comes from my YouTube channel. However, though, I have diversified my income. I'm not totally dependent on YouTube income. I didn't want to be dependent on YouTube income. And you can talk to so many other YouTubers and they will tell you that it's not a good idea to be de totally dependent on YouTube ad revenue income. The reason for that is because YouTube income is one of the most volatile incomes out there. It's extremely unstable. You know, one month you could be doing really good and the other month your views could fall and you could be doing really, really bad. So it really depends on the month. It depends how big you are as a YouTuber. 
there's a lot of factors to it. But regardless, YouTube income is extremely volatile. And that's why a lot of YouTubers, you know, they do things like the stock market. They own rental properties, you know, stuff like that, because they don't want to be totally dependent on just that YouTube income. And so with my rental business, you know, I put a lot of money, I put a huge amount of my life savings into this business. I, I basically purchased a home and I'm renting it out to a family. And I had to spend a lot of time on that property because a lot of people, they, they, they have a big misconception about rental properties. They don't seem to understand it. And I'll explain how this is relevant to Reddit Online in a moment here. But a lot of people have a big misconception about rental properties. And they seem to think in their heads that you just purchase a rental property and you rent it out to somebody and that's it. You don't have to do anything and you can just collect checks every month. That's what a lot of people think about rental properties. That is nonsense. That is not true. Now, rental properties do require a lot of work. It obviously depends on how old the building is. Newer buildings will have less problems, but there's almost always some kind of problem. And so I've had to go to that house multiple times. I've had to get people to fix certain things, you know, certain things go wrong, but I always take care of my tenants and I fix things. And there have been days, in, entire days that I actually spent at that house, you know, taking care of something for my tenants. And I was not able to record um, videos. I wasn't able to make videos in that day. So technically you could argue that I was losing money by not making videos in that day. However, though, I don't regret, you know, going to that house and, you know, helping my tenants out. Because like I said, even though my rental property does not make as much money as my YouTube channel, I have diversified my income and I have gotten income from other sources. So I had to put, you know, a lot of money into that. But even though I put a lot of money into that, it's an extra form of income that's now coming back to me. So basically, you know, my, my argument here is that if worst case scenario happens, something, you know, bad happens with my YouTube channel, like, you know, my views completely plummet to, you know, almost nothing, I will still have that rental property to fall back on. I will still have some income, some income being made um, on the side while I figure out what to do next. And eventually I want to buy a second rental property. But the thing about this is that if I listen to this, the same logic these people make, like I said, when they say that, you know, it's good Rockstar abandoned rented online because it's good for business. If I listen to this exact same logic, if I listen to these people's logic, that according to their logic, the second that the lease ends with my tenants, that I should just get rid of my rental property. I should probably just sell the building and stop doing it. Instead, I should just devote that time to just making YouTube videos and just putting ads if I, if I listen to that argument. But no, I want to have diversified income. I don't want to be totally dependent on YouTube income. This is what people don't understand. They see one thing that's making the most amount of money and they think, oh, only do this, only do this. Don't do anything else that makes you money. You should always try to have diversified income because like I said, when something goes wrong, you are you have another way of making money. And with, in terms of Reddit Online, I'll have these people that'll, defend, that'll be defending Rockstar saying Reddit Online is not turning a profit for them. You mean, seriously, Reddit, on, Reddit Redemption 2 has 45 million copies sold. And while Reddit Online's numbers are not good right now, the reason, like I said, is because it does not have content. But the moment that you have content, a lot of people are going to jump on the game. Red Dead Redemption 2 is not a game that typically people sell. It's not a game people beat and they sell. It's a game with a lot of replayability. It's a very detailed open world game. A lot of people keep it just for the story. And if Rockstar is making huge DLCs for the online, they're more likely to play the online as well. And so Rockstar is making money, not just from GT Online, but also from Red Dead Online. They have diversified their income. But now with this, they have made themselves totally dependent on GT Online. And when they run out of ideas on GT Online, what is going to happen at that point? You know, what is the result going to be? And my next point here is that Rockstar should have continued to support Reddit Online and make content for Reddit Online, even if it wasn't that profitable. And I know I'm going to have a lot of people call me a total idiot on this. And there's going to be people who are going to comment before even watching or listening to me. And if you're going to argue with me, then at least listen to this point that I'm going to make here uh, completely. But basically, I know what a lot of people are thinking. Why should Rockstar make more content for Reddit Online if they're not going to make much of a profit from it? The reason, because, and this is business 101, sometimes in business, you have to take a loss intentionally. You have to intentionally do something that'll cost you money. Now, why would you intentionally do something that's going to cost you money? The reason for that is because if you don't take a loss at some point intentionally, you're going to take an even greater loss later on down the road. Let me give you a perfect example of this. So when I used to work in retail, there was this customer that would come in. He was a regular. He would use uh, the photo machine, print pictures constantly. He was trying to print like 100 pictures in one order once. And what happened was the photo machine was breaking. It was having problems all day, constantly just going down. He was an 
spending at that machine. He spent hours at that machine. We were constantly trying to fix it. There's something wrong with the machine. And then what happened was hours later, my supervisor um, fixed it. Now, this guy was getting really agitated. He was getting really irritated. He's been there for hours trying to print the pictures, and the pictures kept coming in out bad. Like, he kept getting bad pictures. And then finally, the machine was fixed. He got good pictures. He had like 100-something pictures. And you know what my supervisor did? She gave him those 100 pictures for free. She gave them those that entire order for free. Now, we took a loss on that. Yeah, we did, but it was worth it. And the reason that it was worth it is because uh, there's two reasons my supervisor did what she did. The first reason was so that the customer would not complain to corporate. And the second reason is because this guy was a regular customer. And one of the worst things that you can do as a business is to lose a regular customer because that's somebody you know is always going to come in and do business with you. You lose somebody like that. That's really bad for your business. Now, what ended up happening is the guy was actually happy. He didn't have to pay anything. He walked out he, uh, with his order, and then he came back in the future and printed more pictures. Now, what would have happened? There's some people, some of these business geniuses that I've seen in the comments that would tell you, oh, you know, we should have charged a guy. The guy should have just been charged for the pictures. You know what would have happened if he charged a guy for that picture order? The guy probably would have gotten pissed off. He would have been having the attitude, I've been here for hours trying to print pictures for something that's not my fault, and you're going to dare charge me full price for this for something that's not my fault? I've been inconvenienced. And basically, he'll probably pick up that order. He'll probably pay for that picture because that's what he was there for. But he's going to say at that point, you know what? Screw this. I'm never doing business with this store again. I'm not coming back to this store. So while we took a hit right there, we we you know we did not you know make any money. And I should I shouldn't even say we because I was just a regular retail employee. But I was saying more of the company. The company did the store did did take a loss there. They did lose some money, but they retained a regular customer, and that customer came by so many other times in the future and spent more money. So was it better just to make a profit off him right there and never have him come back, or take a loss and have him come back? and be a regular pretty much the entire time. I think the second option is the better option there. But that's exactly my point. And now comparing this Reddit online, I know I'm going to have people that are going to say, you know, you can't compare this to Reddit online. You can't compare an entire, you know, video game with just this photo uh, example. The photo example I was just using as an example to show you why sometimes you need to take a loss when you're, a bi as, when you're in business. And comparing this to Reddit online, you know, people like to throw around these numbers all the time. I see these people, you know, defending Rockstar saying GTA 5 sold 170 million copies. Reddit online sold only 45 million copies. And I laugh. I absolutely laugh when they say only 45 million. That is just such a stupid um, uh, way to describe it. Now, look, I'm not denying that GTA 5 sold way more copies, but 45 million copies isn't only. 45 million copies is a ton. And I understand that a lot of these GTA and Red Dead customers are the same. I get that. But like I said, you've developed a unique community on this game. This game is a unique community that follows it. And there's Red Dead community. It's pretty strong, even if not in the online sense, at least in the single player sense. A lot of people that are very interested in the single player, there's entire YouTube channels that are just devoted just to the single player portion of Red Dead Online. And by canceling out Red Dead Online, you were basically telling those players, you know what, we don't care about you. You want content? Go play GTA Online. And while some of these players might go and play GTA Online, a lot of the other ones are going to, you know, get pissed off, and they're just going to stop, you know, uh, they're not going to play Reddit Online, and they're not really going to play GTA Online either. You know, they're just not going to, they're just not going to support Rockstar products. They'll probably buy GTA 6 in the future, I'm not denying that. A lot of us will, but don't expect a lot of these people to buy shark cards. Don't expect these people to buy GTA Plus. They've gotten pissed off. You pushed a group of your customers to the side. So this is why I think that Rockstar should have still made content for Red Dead Online, to show the Red Dead players that they at least care. They at least care about the community, that they're at least giving some kind of service to them. And because of that, you keep those customers for the future. And when Rockstar releases products in the future, those customers are more likely to shop with you. But now, which is how the Red Dead players have been treated, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna have stats to back this up. I have some stats later on, which I'll actually uh, this will reinforce my argument. But that'll be near the end of the video because I want to uh, talk about a separate topic near the end. But my point is, you, sometimes you need to take a loss in business, and this is I think this is exactly here with Red Dead Online. And if Rockstar supported this game, like I said, I can't picture them losing money. They will either break even or make some kind of profit. Because plenty of new players are coming to this game, and I know people will say that Red Dead players have so much cash and gold, so there's no need to spend stuff. The reason we have so much cash and gold is because there's nothing to buy. If Rockstar added something like houses to this game, player houses, even made them, you know, pretty expensive, you know, even a couple hundred gold, I'd buy them. And I'm sure there would be other people that would buy it as well, so there is money to be made here. Rockstar is just choosing not to. And I will explain later on in this video why they're actually abandoning Red Dead Online, at least in my opinion. But it's important to keep the Red Dead player base happy. Release content for the fans, show them that you care, show some kind of communication. You develop a respect, honor be between the fans and the developer. Now, in regards to my rental business that I talked about beforehand, guys, 
This is the exact same concept. Now with my rental business, I go above and beyond for my tenants. I'm always there whenever they need me. Whenever they have any kind of issue, I'm always there pronto. I deal with it. And there are days that I have missed. Like I said, there's days that I've missed recording, but I don't regret it because I was there for my tenants to help them. It's an extra form of income that I'm making. And I've done things that I didn't have to do, but I did it just to keep, uh, keep my tenants happy and keep a good relationship with them. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. A perfect example of this is I took care of the sprinkler system. I'm going to be winterizing the sprinklers for them. I'm bringing in somebody that's going to winterize. They're going to pay for that service. I'm not going to charge my tenants at all for that. Um, my tenants are not responsible for winterizing the sprinklers. Technically, they're not. Nothing involved in the lease says that I have to do that. But I still do that. That's just one example. I go out of my way uh, doing that to show my tenants that I care. And they've had issues. I go to the house. I talk to them right away. I respond within that day. Another issue. Uh, another another thing, one one my, my one of my tenants, she texted me and she said, hey, you know, my brother is going to be in town, you know, for a few months. Is it OK if he stays at the house? I by no means had to uh, agree to that. I didn't have to agree to that. You know, only her and her husband are on that lease. There's nobody else on that lease. So technically, I could have just said no. And uh, she wouldn't have been allowed to let her brother live there for a few months with them. But you know what? I agreed to it. I didn't charge them anything else. I said, yeah, that's fine because my tenants were responsible people. They always paid on time. They were good people. And so we develop a bond between my tenants. The reason I do this for my tenants, even though I'm not making uh, any extra money, the reason I do stuff like this, and I also change the filters. You know, I pay for the filters to change them in the furnaces and the air condition. I deal with that. I deal with a lot of uh, maintenance stuff around the house. I don't charge them for that. The reason that I do this stuff is so that when my tenants look at me and they think this guy's not a scumbag landlord, he actually uh, cares, he, he can work with us, you know, he's a decent guy. And because of that, we develop a relationship. You know, I'm happy, you know, you know, rental income is coming in every month. They're happy. They're receiving tremendous service from me. And because of that, because of that good relationship, that bond between my tenant and me uh, as the landlord, my tenants, when the, their lease expires, they're more likely to sign another year of me. They're more likely to stay another year of me. They saw that I took care of them. I treated them fairly. And because of that, I can retain that tenant. It doesn't mean that I'm always going to get that tenant. They might move out when the lease ends. But I'd like to think that by me keeping a good relationship with those tenants, that increases the likelihood of them renewing their lease with me. So that's ultimately why I do stuff like that. I'm a good person, want to help people out, but I also know that it's good for business as well to keep a good relationship with your customers. And if, if you don't like my, you know, if you don't like my landlord examples, you can look to a lot of video games. There's a lot of video games out there that release free content. Why do you think developers release free content on their games if they're not making any money from it? Do you think they do it just out of the kindness of their heart? I'm sure there is some respect towards the fans, um, but the main reason that they do it is to retain their player base, to show their fans that they care about the game and they care about the community. Now, some developers release free content because they're hoping that, that um, fans will util, uh, buy microtransactions. This is like Rockstar. Rockstar's had like a pretty good you know, idea of Reddit Online, at least at the start, and GTA Online, that they've released free content on the game and they give players the option to buy microtransactions to speed up purchasing uh, stuff in those updates if they don't want to you know, grind the game. This has been a pretty good business model. Fans are happy. They get free content in the game and they can also buy shark cards. They can buy shark cards, and that makes Rockstar money. Uh, so this has been, you know, typically a good business model for Rockstar. But if we look at other games, there's other games where they don't even have, you know, this microtransaction system. Like, look at a game like Hell Let Loose, for instance. Hell Let Loose is a World War II game that I play. Now, Hell Let Loose, in that game, the developer has released a lot of um, DLC over time. They've released, like, a Soviet expansion. They've released maps. They've released new vehicles. And they're e supporting more content. And when the game the game was released on um, a PlayStation Plus for free, I'm sure they had some deal with, uh, with Sony about that, but I was to advertise it to a group, a, a large group of um, players. And they do have some DLC in the PlayStation Store. You know, I think it's like some clothing packs, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there are some DLC that you can buy, but they're releasing more free content along the way. And that's because they know it'll keep the player base on their game. And even though there's no microtransactions in Hell Let Loose, having a high player base is healthy for their game. Because when other players look at a game like Hell Let Loose, they see, wow, this developer developer 
They uh, they care about their community. They respond to their community. They do free updates, and because of that, the community is big. I think I'm going to buy this game, knowing that this developer is going to support it. So other people look at that, and they buy it. So that's why I honestly think it's important sometimes to take a loss as a business, because if you don't take a loss as a business intentionally, you might lose customers along the way. And I think that Rockstar is going to lose a lot of money. A lot of Red Dead customers, I think they're going to lose a, uh, along the way because of this, and I don't think people are calculating that. If you're, if you're saying that it's good for business, what Rockstar did to Red Dead Online, you also have to admit that it's bad for business losing a ton of these Red Dead fans because there's a lot of people that are just sick of GTA Online. They don't want to play GTA Online. They're very passionate about Red Dead and you're losing a lot of these fans by doing this, Rockstar. You're losing customers. And let me show you guys this also on my channel. So take a look at this. This is actually when I played The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. And so this is a series I started a year ago and I actually did 40 parts on this series and some parts were over three hours long. So there was it was a pretty decent, uh, decently long series. But if you notice the view count on these videos, the view count is around 4,000, 5,000, some of them are even 3,000 um, views. These are, this is still really good views, but you know, you compare this to some of my other content, like you compare this to my GTA content, for instance, it gets much, much more views than this. However, though, I never stopped doing this series, and I finished the entire series, and I'm purposely showing this because I have a lot of people that always say to me, if you were in Rockstar's position, you would do the exact same thing. No, I wouldn't. You can see, when I took my channel away from GTA, my views did drop, but I diversified my content. I widened my my audience. A lot of different people are watching my content from different for different things. Instead of having people just interested in watching my GTA content, I'm having people finding all different types of content on my channel. People that would have never found my channel before are finding my channel. And this is what I've tried to explain to people so many times. The views don't necessarily uh, are not necessarily the only thing you should worry about. Because if you just play one game, that's only going to attract one type of audience, only the people interested in that specific game. And so these, you know, Ace Attorney videos, my point is that these Ace Attorney videos did not get as much views as some of my other content, but I never stopped the series. I finished the entire series. I did 40 parts. Now, why did I finish the series despite it not getting that many views? Why did I put so much time and effort into it? I dressed up as Rinosuke in the game. I actually put on his outfit um, while I was playing through the game. Uh, so I, I had a lot of fun with this. But the, re the two reasons that I did finish this series was because one I really liked the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. It was my favorite game of 2021. It was. And the second reason is, is because I had fans that wanted to watch the series. And one thing that personally irritates me so much is when I see YouTubers, they start out on a series. They start a series on a game, and they maybe do like one or two parts, and then they realize that that series isn't as popular as some of their other content, and they just stop that series. They just abandon it after like two parts. That irritates me so much because there, even if it might, even if it doesn't have as much views as some of your other content, there were fans that were interested in that and you could do your regular content on the side but i see no reason why you can't finish a series when you start it and when youtubers start a series they do like one or two parts and they just abandon it they're abandoning it mostly because of views because they, they think it's not going to bring as much money what you're basically doing is you're abandoning the viewers that were interested in that series because people did want to watch it even if, there, if it wasn't that popular people still did want to watch it now if I abandon Ace Attorney, if I follow these people's logic, this is exactly what I was talking about with, you know, uh, having good relations with your customers, is I, I wanted to have this series up because I had fans that I know were interested in watching it, and I wanted to be fair to them. If I followed these people's logic that constantly talk about what's good for business, I should have just cut the entire Ace Attorney series. I shouldn't even even gotten past part two, and I should have just moved on to doing GTA content, other content, because that was getting more views. But if I did that, do you know what that would have done? That would have disappointed those 5,000 viewers that watched that content. So even though it wasn't as much as you know some of my other content, I would have let those viewers down, and I didn't want to do that. So not everything, not everything is about views, not everything is necessarily about money. Yes, I know they're a business, but you gotta do right by your fans, and you gotta show your fans oftentimes that you care, which is my next point. Which is that Red Dead Online is a long-term investment. Red Dead Online is a long-term investment, just like GTA Online was. But what Rockstar is basically doing here is Rockstar expected to put as minimal work into Red Dead Online and expected to just milk it and make 
pretty much similar amounts of money that they made to GTA Online, but the reason they made so much money from GTA Online was because of the constant updates, the constant support of the game. They didn't give that same attention to Red Dead Online. And this is what people do not understand when they push this business argument. Not everything is going to make you tons of money right away. Some stuff takes time to build until it becomes very profitable. There's some videos on my channel that are not popular at first. They're not popular for the few, first few weeks, but then many months later, they become very popular. So in, investments take time. And a lot of businesses, when businesses first start out as a business, most businesses have some kind of debt. Some businesses have a lot of debt. Some have, have little debt. But almost every business has some form of debt out there. And these businesses... It's, it oftentimes takes them years until they're able to make a full profit. They're able to pay off bills and they're able to pay off their mortgage and so, but it takes them years until they actually make a profit. And that's the whole point is something like Reddit Online is not going to turn a profit instantly. It's not going to make Rockstar millions of dollars right away with one update, but it's going to make Rockstar millions of dollars and plenty of money over time if they actually focus on the game and they make updates over time, large updates that attract a wider audience. But Rockstar does not want to put that effort in. It's the same with my rental property. My rental property is not generate me as much money as my YouTube channel. It's some money on the side that I have. It's enough money to pay the bills, but it's some money that I have on the side. It's not like you know, I'm not making you know tons of money from my rental property, but it's something that I make money from over time. And you know what I eventually want to do? Eventually, I want to get a second rental property, possibly in the winter time, and I might have some debt from that as well. It might happen. I don't know what my situation will be like in the winter time, but you know, if I do incur some debt, it's because it's an investment. It's an investment in in a future business that I'm running. I have one rental property. It's going good, and I want to try to get a second rental property. So something like that takes time i had to you know i had to get a permit um for the um, for the rental property i had to do multiple inspections i had to do a lot of things around the house to get the house ready for tenants so the point that i'm making is that a project like reddit online is a long-term investment rockstar and maybe this is even take two interactive that's doing this not even rockstar but there's somebody in these offices that does not understand how games like reddit online work they think that the game is supposed to turn massive profits right away and if it doesn't turn those profits right away they think that it's a failure and that's ultimately what i think did happen with reddit online but now moving on to my next point which is about gta plus Now GTA Plus, you know, we know this whole service. I don't want I don't want to explain to you guys what GTA Plus is. A lot of you guys know what this is. It's this monthly subscription that's on um, GTA 5. And there's one topic that I wanted to go over here really quickly, which is how is canceling Reddit Online good for business, but GTA Plus isn't good for business? And what I mean by this is that I have noticed that there's like a lot of people that were like, you know, defending Rockstar. You know, this is before Rockstar even canceled Reddit Online, which we pretty much knew the game was eventually going to get canceled. I've seen people, you know, defending Rockstar uh, constantly over, you know, the, the ill treatment of Reddit Online, the neglect of Reddit Online. But then I've seen a lot of these same people get really pissed off when GTA Plus came out saying that this is corporate greed. We don't need this, blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong. I agree with that, that sentiment. GTA Plus is corporate greed. We don't need GTA. Plus, it's nonsense. It's just stupid. Why is a game that's like you know, uh, you know, eight years old, you know, why is that game getting all of a sudden now like a, a subscription service? It's stupid. You know, the game is gonna be nine years old um pretty soon. It, that that is just really dumb. We don't need that. But the point that I'm making is that people are hypocrites a lot of times because a lot of these players they were constantly attacking Red Dead Online, defending what Rockstar did with Red Dead Online. But then the second they do something greedy, like with GTA Plus, they get all pissed off about that. And like I said, you can turn these exact same people's arguments against them, and you can say, well, if you're saying that Red Dead Online being killed is good for business, couldn't somebody else argue that GTA Plus is also good for business since it makes Rockstar a ton of money? See, the, see, see this logic here? When you follow everything, you know, you, 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 you follow this obsession with money. This makes money here, this blah, 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 this. This is the most profitable. You see where this ends up going? Into exactly into stuff like this. And look, if you're one of those people that says that, that, uh, that GTA Plus is good for business and canceling Reddit Online is good for business, you know, I would still heavily disagree with you. I would, but at least I wouldn't call you a hypocrite. But if you are one of those people who is saying that killing off Reddit Online is good for business, but then you are denying that GTA Plus is also good for business, then you are a hypocrite. 
You are. And I'm not defending GTA Plus by any means. I don't think it's necessary. I think that it's just corporate greed. I think it's stupid. But if you follow these people's logic, if you follow the logic exactly that they're that they're using when they attack Reddit Online, if abandoning Reddit Online is good for business, then you also have to admit that GTA Plus is good for business. Otherwise, if you do not admit to that, then you're pretty much a hypocrite. I just don't understand this logic personally, guys. I don't. Maybe the, these people are seeing something that I'm not seeing, but when I see these, like, you know, people that say that, like, you know, Rockstar did with GTA, um, uh, uh, with GTA Plus, that's corporate greed, that's scummy. I see these people, um, saying that what Rockstar did with GTA Definitive Edition is greed. Um, I see uh, people saying that, um, what Rockstar did with, um, uh, releasing Expanded Enhanced at that price, but not, you know, um, not having it as, like, a free upgrade or much cheaper is, is greed. And then what they did with the Kyle Perico heist nerf is greed. But then when it comes to, to Reddit Online, those same people that were calling all those other things greedy are then just saying, oh, you know, that that's actually correct. It's a smart business decision. It's like, what? You just said all those other things were greed and that was wrong. But then when it comes to Reddit Online, you say that's a smart business decision abandoning it? What? I, I just do not understand this logic. And don't get me wrong. Everything that I said before, I, I agree with those people previously that all of that other stuff was, was greed on Rockstar's part. But then... Trying to criticize Rockstar for other greedy elements, but then defending Rockstar's greed and Reddit Online, it, it, I, I don't understand it. I, I just don't. Uh, you know, like I said, maybe they're seeing something I'm not, but I just don't get that logic. And, uh, and, and this brings me to actually my other point. which is where Reddit Online fans and Rockstar fanboys have gotten into massive arguments, and that's that Reddit Online fans are somehow toxic. Now, basically what this is, is I've seen accusations being thrown around. I've seen, you know, people defending Rockstar, trying to accuse the Reddit community, trying to slander the Save Reddit Online uh, movement, trying to make it look bad, and trying to um, uh, accuse the Reddit community of being toxic towards Rockstar, threatening and harassing Rockstar developers. Now, what I'll say about this is you can watch my YouTube videos, and you can watch plenty of other people's YouTube videos who are spreading around this hashtag, and none of us None of us condoned, supported any kind of harassment or, or threatening behavior towards Rockstar. I even said several of my videos, I said I do not support any kind of harassment or threats towards Rockstar. The vast majority of people in the Red Dead community do not support that. Now, I'm not going to sit there and deny that there was um, uh, that there isn't people in the Red Dead community that are toxic. There are people in the Red Dead community that are toxic, and there are people who did threaten the Rockstar developers. I'm not going to deny that, but what I'll say about those people is those people are absolute idiots and do not represent the vast majority of the Red Dead community. The vast majority of people I've seen, I've seen people on Twitter and um, uh, Reddit and YouTube. Um, uh, I've seen people you know, post this hashtag around, come together, and everybody's getting along with each other and all we wanted was we just wanted some support and communication from Rockstar that's it anybody who threatens Rockstar over you know Rockstar's cancellation of Reddit Online you're an idiot you know you're harassing the developer but on top of that is you're hurting also the movement you're making the movement look bad and I see these people that try to label the entire Reddit Online movement as being toxic because of this. This does not this does not represent the the, the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people were um just wanted an update to the game. We just wanted communication with Rockstar. That's it. We don't support any kind of threats. I, I condemn any kind of you know threats or harassment towards Rockstar. It's just wrong and it's stupid. Uh, but, you know, to try to somehow link the Reddit community to that and try to use that to slander, um, you know, save Reddit online, for, for me, that's just, that's just stupid. Anytime you have a movement, anytime you have any kind of movement, you're going to have some dumb people in that. But those dumb people do not represent the heart of that movement. It's the same, the same exact thing happened with GTA Definitive Edition. When GTA Definitive Edition came out, people were pissed off. It was a glitchy mess. It was a disaster. And actually what happened during that is there were some idiots that actually threatened Grove Street Games over that. That's just wrong. You don't threaten developers. It's wrong. It, it's just bad. And there's a lot of developers that are not responsible with these final decisions. That's mostly a lot of people up in corporate that, you know, finally, you know, rush these games out. But, you know, there was idiots that were threatening Grove Street Games, and that's wrong. But... The point is that a lot of people were pissed off for valid reasons. I'm not talking about the people who were threatening. I'm talking about the vast majority of people. They weren't threatening uh, Grove Street Games, but they were pissed off with the state that GTA Definitive Edition was in. They paid $60 for GTA Definitive Edition, 
And instead, you know, they got a glitchy mess. So people had a right to be angry. But in that group of people, you had a few people that were stupid and threatened. But that does not represent the bulk of the people. The bulk of the people that were pissed off and had actually legitimate grievances and were not threatening anybody. They were just pissed off with the state that the game was in. Same thing for the Reddit community. The vast majority of the Reddit community does not support this kind of toxic behavior. All we wanted was we just wanted an update. That's it. And meanwhile, you know, you have people in the GTA community that are can be very toxic as well. And I've seen people that constantly spam and harass Rockstar on their Twitter over GTA 6. You'll see so many comments relating to GTA 6, and, and it's very disturbing. I don't want to show any of these comments here, guys. I've seen comments, but I don't want to show these comments because they're, they're really messed up. But I've seen, like, comments of people posting, like, GTA 6 comments. When Rockstar makes a, a tweet of somebody passing away, you have idiots out there that post tweets demanding GTA 6 when they're just posting a message about somebody from their team or somebody that they know that has passed away. That's just messed up how somebody can ask for... Uh, for GTA 6, you know, d during stuff like that. But my point is that, you know, you have a lot of people on the internet, and when you have a lot of people on the internet, you're going to have stupid and toxic people there. But that does not represent the vast majority of the GTA or the Reddit community. The vast majority of both the GTA and the Reddit community are not toxic people. They do not support any kind of harassment. But it's just a few idiots that make both communities look bad. That's the point that I'm making. So no, the Reddit Online community and Save Reddit Online are not toxic towards Rockstar. The only thing we asked for is we just asked for an update. That's all we we wanted we just wanted an update and we just wanted support that's it and i don't and me and a lot of other people in the reddit community we don't even hate the um uh the regular rockstar developer we know that that's completely out of their control and i'm sure there's people that want to develop this game and they want to make content for it you know my main issue the people that i i dislike personally are you know the the top bosses the you know the the, the ceos the people at the top that are making this decision and deciding to cancel reddit online those are the people that i, that I dislike but the average rockstar developer i don't dislike them and I'll actually tell you guys another thing. What's What for me is toxic, something that the Rockstar Twitter actually did, is they have ignored the Reddit online community for seven months with, this, um, with that hashtag going on. And what actually happened was the official Rockstar Twitter actually liked a post. They liked a post from Gaming Detective who actually said that Reddit Redemption 2 is one of the best games that he ever played. But Rockstar did not read the very bottom of the post, which was hashtag save Reddit online. And what they did afterwards is what they unliked it and tried to pretend like it didn't happen. For me, when they do something like that, that's toxic. That your fans care deeply about the game, they just want some communication from you, and you accidentally like a tweet that has a Save Reddit Online in it, but then you unlike it, you know, basically showing your fans what you actually think of them. That's just disgusting. And I don't understand how these um, people, these fanboys defending Rockstar can actually justify something like that. Now we download, enter. 9%, 57%, 100%. 100%. Huh, Hank, are you standing on the cable? Well, I guess that's a relief. Let me take a look. And here we are moving on to our next argument. This is an argument that people typically make in which they say that Rockstar does not owe the Reddit online community anything and they are not responsible. Basically, people are arguing in this um, argument that Rockstar is not responsible for any content. They, they never made any promises to the community, so therefore you're complaining for nothing. Heard people say this a few times. Now, I'll tell you, Rockstar did make actual promises to the community. They, they did promise content on Reddit Online. And I'm going to prove this wrong. I'm going to prove this argument wrong because this argument is nonsense. But anyways, I'm going to... Cite these sources down below, and if you don't believe me that Rockstar actually made these claims, I'll, I'll link three sources down below. So I'll link all three of these sources down below so you guys can check them out yourselves. But two of these sources are from VG247. 
Now, VG247, this is a video game website, and they interviewed Rockstar Games three years ago. Now, they interviewed them in September of 2019, and this is what Rockstar said then. They said, we wanted the player to start their camp, Pika explains. We thought that was a good fit. You know, we don't want you to jump the ladder too soon, whereas we put high-end businesses into GTA quite quickly. We actually want the player to start on that first business and then keep going. We've got plans for other business ventures that the player could do. We just want each one that we add to feel distinct from the next one. So it's not like we're going to say, okay, here's a trader. Now everything is the same. We want each one of these to feel different. We want players to look back at what uh, they've achieved over time and say, that's where I started and now look at where I am. Yet, yet we're still at the camp. Uh, we've mentioned before that we'd like players and their characters to experience the journey from running a fledge fledgling business at camp to becoming some kind of industrialist. So just a question of creating a fun and logical path from one to the other with the right amount of steps in between. Right now, players are running a business out of the camp with crypts as well as developing the camp itself. But the idea is that at some point, new opportunities may be too big to be sustained inside the camp. So maybe it needs to move to another property. At that point, there could be multiple kinds of businesses players can look at running simultaneously, but none of this is set in stone. We're still absorbing the feedback from players from these initial roles and we'll see how we can improve upon these ideas as we go. Now this part that I've highlighted here, but nothing, none of this is set in stone. So the people defending Rockstar are going to love this and they cite this as well and they say, oh see, Rockstar did not make any promises. They just suggested what they wanted to add to Reddit Online, but they didn't make any actual promises. Oh yeah? Well, I beg to differ. While Rockstar did say right here, none of this is set in stone, if we actually take a look at VG247's other page, they were, Rockstar Games was also interviewed specifically about single-player content. Now, why is this relevant to Reddit Online? The reason that this is relevant to Reddit Online is because so many players want single-player content in this game. People have wanted Undead Nightmare Part 2, people have wanted a Sadie Adler storyline, A um, they wanted a Dutch prequel, they wanted a... DLC possibly where he plays Javier Escuela as you go to Mexico. So there is so many ideas that people had for single player DLCs and you cannot tell me that these would not have sold. Even the people who claim that Reddit Online is not profitable, even they would have to concede and accept the fact that if Rockstar made an Undead Nightmare Part 2 for a single player, that would sell a lot and make a lot of money. There is no question in my mind on that. You can just look at Undead Nightmare Part 1 and how much of a success that was for Rockstar. But anyways, the reason it's relevant to Reddit Online is because in this interview, the VG247 also asked Rockstar about, about single-player DLC. And in this interview right here, this is what they say. They say, we're 100% focused on online right now, because like I said, there's just so much to do. And we're just hoping to bring everything that a player can love about single player into the online world and fleshed out lead online producer, production associate, Katie Pika explained. So basically they're saying that they want to, um, uh, that they're hoping to bring everything that a player can love about single player into the online world. Well, that didn't happen. And if we actually look down here, we have even more proof of this. So it says here, We've said it before, but we all love single-player games, and Red Dead Redemption 2's absolutely massive story and equally massive epilogue are, are hopefully evidence of that, online producer Tariq Hamad explained. The team's ambitions for Red Dead Redemption 2 were sky-high in every way, and when we are building worlds of that scale, the single-player experience almost always leads the, the way. Our ambition for our online games are just as high, and with Red Dead Online, we are continuing to build and expand to match the world we've created for Red Dead Redemption 2's story, not just with the roles, but other activities. Activities, new random events, characters to meet, new ways to engage with the world, and further inhabit your character as well as trying to improve the overall experience. So right here, Rockstar has admitted that they are not going to be making single-player DLC, and instead they say, our focus is 100% on Red Dead Online. We want to bring Red Dead Online to the same level that single-player was. Well, anybody who has told, played the single-player can tell you that the amount of detail in Red Dead Online is not even half of the detail in the single player. The single player has this way more content than Red Dead Online does. So Rockstar did not keep their promises here. Yes, they, when they talked about the industrialist role, they said that that's not set in stone, but then also in this other article, in this other, I don't know if it's the same interview, but it's another article on VG247 with Rockstar, with Tariq Hamad, and also with, um, Katie Pika, and both of these Rockstar producers said that they want to make Red Dead Online just like a single player. Well, those promises were completely broken. We have not even had half of that content that single player has. The world is is does not have that level of detail. Sure, there's some random events, but it's nothing like the single player. 
Promise not kept. And then also, this brings me to my third point. If you still don't believe me that Rockstar has actually promised content on Reddit Online, you can simply look at Reddit Online on Google. Just go on Google, type in Reddit Online, as I'm doing right here, and click on the first link. The first link that comes up, this is from Rockstar Games themselves. And what does it say? It says, Reddit Online, Reddit Online standalone, now available, details. We scroll down below. Step into the vibrant, ever-evolving world of Reddit Online and experience life across frontier America. Ever-evolving world. Ever-evolving world. When was the Reddit Online standalone released? That was released in 2020, right? And that's pretty much when Reddit Online was killed at that point in 2020. We had Naturalist DLC, which is really our last DLC until, you know, we had the Bounty Hunter expansion. Don't count that as a DLC, just expanding on a current role that we had. And then we had Blood Money, which was just recycled bag missions. So when they finally did release the standalone for Reddit Online... The standalone at that point, the game was pretty much already done. So you could actually argue this is false advertising. Ever evolving world? What 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 would be ever evolving world right now here, Rockstar? And Rockstar's perspective, Rockstar would probably argue, oh, when we add adversary modes and we add, you know, monthly events, that's an ever-evolving world. For me, that's not an ever-evolving world. So right here, you have proof of Rockstar stating that they're not making single-player DLC, and instead they're focusing 100% of their resource on Reddit Online, when now they're completely abandoning Reddit Online and saying that they're going to be focusing that those resources onto the next Grand Theft Auto game. Promise broken. Anybody who tells you that Rockstar did not make promises um, for Reddit Online that... They're speaking basic nonsense. You have the proof right here. I will post these three links down below so you guys can check them out yourselves. If you tell your fans you're going to do something, you keep your word, you keep your promises. But Rockstar, they screwed over the Reddit Online community. I don't care what people would say to me that, oh, they saw that it wasn't profitable anymore. They literally said that they are 100% focused on Reddit Online. They didn't even give half of the content in that interview that they said. Yeah, make it as detailed as a single player. Promise broken. Community completely betrayed. And this actually brings me to my next point. And that is that the vast majority of people that defend Rockstar do not even play Red Dead Online. And if they have played Red Dead Online, they've barely played it. They maybe played it for a little bit, maybe did the intro, maybe leveled up a few times, but I doubt they actually finished Red Dead Online's story. And yes, there actually is a story in Red Dead Online. And I've noticed this is a pretty, pretty big trend in people that defend Rockstar. Now, I'm not going to sit there and say that every single person that... Um, that defends Rockstar hasn't played Reddit Online. I'm sure there's some people that defend Rockstar that have played Reddit Online somewhat and are decently high levels, but I'll tell you, the vast majority of people that I've seen that defend Rockstar do not play the game. Have you noticed that? I don't think that that is a coincidence. Usually I've noticed that they, they play GT Online regularly, you know, they're GT Online players. But why is that? Why is that that so many people that defend Rockstar don't even play Reddit Online. And why is this actually important in this discussion? Now, I've actually brought, I actually tried to avoid bringing this up. I actually did. But when I get into arguments with these people, the reason I try to avoid bringing it up is because some people might see it as a personal attack on that person, which I don't really like to do. I like to, you know, base my arguments in logic and reasoning. But I will bring this argument up when I get into an argument with somebody and they're just not listening to me, they don't want to see my point of view in the subject, and they just keep basically defending Rockstar till the end on this. Now, tried really hard not to talk about this, but decided I, I decided that I think it, this would be relevant, and I throw this in. Now, the few people that I have actually taught, argued with, and um, I know that they have not played Reddit Online, when I actually brought this point up to them, and I said to them that, you know, you haven't played Reddit Online, most of the time, it's the exact same response that I get, get. And that response is, I don't need to play Reddit Online to have an opinion. And I agree. You know, you don't need to play Reddit Online to have an opinion. You could not play the game at all, and you could think that Rockstar is completely justified in that. I'm not denying that that person can have a, an opinion. However, though, I also have the right to criticize. And I also have the right to not take you seriously and criticize you when you are claiming that Rockstar made the correct decision in abandoning Reddit Online when you haven't even played it. 
And I personally think that that's, that's so stupid. If somebody, you know, if somebody played Reddit online, and I, and I don't deny that there are people that play Red Dead Online regularly, defend Rockstar, and think killing off Red Dead Online was a good idea. But theoretically, let's just say that there was somebody that played Red Dead Online, and they played this game regularly. They were a decent high level. They completed most of the activities in the game. They own the, the trader business, collector business. They have done the bounty hunter a lot. They've pretty much done everything that's in the game. If those one of those people that's played the game regularly came to me and said, you know, professional, I think what Rockstar did was a correct business decision. I think it was smart to abandon Reddit online. Then you know what my reaction to that would be? My reaction would be I would still heavily disagree with that person, but at least I would take that person somewhat more seriously than someone who has not played the game at all. And the reason that I don't take people who don't play the game um, at all seriously, the reason I don't take them seriously, is because they make nonsense arguments. Like I told you guys before, they make... Have you guys seen those comments? I'm sure you've seen them. Where people say that, oh, you know, there's only so much Rockstar can do in a Wild West game. There is so many ideas that the community has given Rockstar. People have said, I want a farmer um, role. I want a, a role where I can play as a bandit, where I can rob trains and banks of my friends. I want a lawman role. I want to be able to own properties. I want to be able to craft properties. Maybe have like some kind of gun dealer um, uh, update. Something along those lines. So uh, there's so many comments, so many ideas that I've seen from people. The Red Dead community is just awesome with their ideas. And Red Dead RP, Red Dead Roleplay, I know has implemented a lot of these ideas which Rockstar has refused. So don't tell me that just because it's a Wild West game, sure, they can't add things like cars and, and jets. I get that. But just because it's a different time period doesn't mean that there's plenty of ideas. The Reddit community gave them plenty of the ideas. Rockstar has this stupid feedback page, which I don't even know what the point of this feedback page is if you're not even going to listen to the feedback. But players have given Rockstar tons of feedback. They've given Rockstar ideas. So when these people say that oh, there's only so much that Rockstar can do in a Wild West game, I know they haven't played the game. Because if you play the game, you understand the potential that this game has. You understand how many updates this game can have. You understand how vast and open this world is. And while it's not as lifelike as the single player, it has room for potential. This, this, the map in this game is so much more detailed than GTA V's map. It's not an opinion, it's a fact. Just with the world, the different environments, all the... All the interactions that you have in the single player, just the wildlife, the plants, you know, the the guns, the uh, there's just so many different things. The catalog, all the items that you can that you can purchase in the game, all the items that you can pick up, just so many things that you can find and you can do. All of that, it's more detailed than GTA 5's world. Now, I'm not trying to slander GTA 5. It's an awesome and great game, but I'm just saying if you compare this to a game like GTA 5, Red Dead Redemption 2 is more detailed. That is the truth. I understand that GTA has vehicles, tons of them, but Red Dead Redemption 2, the world itself is more detailed than GTA 5's world. If you really think about it, GTA 5, a lot, of the, a lot of the landscape is mountains and hills, which really don't have a lot of stuff on. But Red Dead Redemption's world has so many different environments from snowy mountains to mountains to forests to grasslands to, um, uh, to swamps to deserts. Um, to even a city, uh, San Denis. There is just so many environments and so many... The, the world is just basically so detailed. That's my point. So if you actually played the game you would understand the potential that this game has. You would understand the potential that this game has to be profitable. And when I see, like, you know, comments of people saying that, like, that there's griefing in Reddit Online and, and that it's really bad, there is griefing in Reddit Online. I don't deny that. However, though, this is nothing in comparison to GTA, which a lot of these people, you know, slander and read that online. I noticed a lot of these people are big GTA players. And so how can you be a GTA player and you can accuse Reddit Online of having so many griefers? Sure, I know there's griefers, but the problem is nowhere near as bad as on GTA Online. On GTA Online, the problem is so much worse. In GTA Online, people constantly blow themselves up, they fly around on an oppressor Mark II, and you're, you can't kill them. You can't. Every single time you're about to kill them, they blow themselves up. And what happens is they finally get that one lucky kill on you, and then they send you a bunch of text messages, one oh, you got owned, whatever, blah, 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 this. Or you'll be fighting some stupid player that they'll constantly um, kill themselves just to avoid being killed by you, and then what they will do is they'll teleport back to their apartment, and then they'll spawn some another annoying vehicle, they'll spawn a night shark, or they'll spawn a deluxo and repeat and rinse and keep doing that same thing over and over again. And people tell me that this isn't a problem on GTA, um, online on on reddit online while there are griefers there's way more ways to counter them and i'm not even just referring to the futuristic vehicles if somebody kills you you can parlay them 
which means that they can't kill you for 10 minutes and you can do most of the activities in the game. You can also go into defensive mode. And when you're in defensive mode, other players actually need to shoot you in free aim. They actually need to free aim you. They can't just lock onto you and shoot you whenever they feel like it. And this is actually a footage that I have from over three years ago. This is right when that May 2019 update came out that actually added defensive mode and I actually used defensive mode. This group of players were trying to kill me and the second I activated defensive mode, they were actually struggling to kill me. And I could get, get an advantage on them and I could get away from that area too. I'm, you know, pr pretty decent, I would say, at free aim. Not amazing, but I've, I've been used to using free aim. And a lot of these griefers, they don't use uh, free aim. They're not used to it. And so whenever you use defensive mode, you throw them out. The point that I'm making here is that there's just so many more ways to counter the griefers in Red Dead Online than there is in, in GTA. I mean, even in Red Dead Online, you know, you don't see player icons unless they're really close to you. In GTA Online, somebody can see exactly where you are at all times and harass you, teleport to their facility, orbital cannon you. There's just way more of this toxic behavior on GT Online. So for people that tell me that there's just so many griefers in Red Dead Online and yet they, they play GTA, I just, I just find it funny and I, I can't take them serious. And so you begin to ask yourself this, you know, for people that, that don't even play the game, you know, why are they defending Rockstar so much? Why are they, you know, saying that this is, you know, a good business decision and everything like that? Well, I don't like putting words in people's mouths. My personal opinion, and this is my opinion, I don't really have fact to back this up, but this is how I feel about this. The reason that I think so many people defend Rockstar on, you know, canceling Reddit Online is because this is pretty much their favorite company. This is their favorite video game company. They uh, they also are probably big GTA players, which I've noticed that I don't think that that's a coincidence that a lot of people that are avid GTA players are people that typically dust justify Rockstar's, um, Rockstar killing off Red Dead Online. What I basically think happens here is I think a lot of these players, they like GTA Online. They really like the game, which GTA Online is a great game, don't get me wrong, but they're fanboys. A lot of these people, you know, they're, they really like the game to the point where they see the company making GTA Online, they see that company being criticized by the Red Dead community. They see a lot of Red Dead fans getting pissed off at Rockstar. They see a lot of Red Dead fans pretty much exposing Rockstar for the scumbag company that they are, and so they get pissed off that their favorite company is getting insulted. And so basically what they do is they try to find some way to justify um, ro what Rockstar did to Red Dead Online, and so they say, oh, you know, what Rockstar did, that's good for business. That is good for business, what Rockstar did. That's at least what I think a lot of these people think, is that they Rockstar is their favorite company, and so they're trying to find some kind of excuse to defend them, and so they bring up this, you know, nonsense, ridiculous argument. And also, I think part of it is I feel like somehow, I don't know where this logic comes from, but the, a lot of these guys, and I'm not saying everyone, but a lot of these guys, they feel like, they feel like, Reddit Online getting support is somehow going to ruin GTA Online or that GTA Online is not going to actually get um, get support. They feel like Rockstar killing GTA uh, Reddit Online off is somehow going to cause GTA to get more updates, and so they support that. And um, the ironic thing is that GTA Online did get more content once Rockstar decided to kill off Reddit Online. And you know what content they got? They got GTA Plus. So you got a paid monthly subscription. So that is the extra content that you got. And I'll tell you something, from the perspective of a big Red Dead Online player, this pisses off a lot of Red Dead players. A lot of Red Dead players are pissed off by this, that people that don't even play the game are coming in and judging the Red Dead community and saying that the Red Dead community is wrong for wanting an update and that Rockstar is right for abandoning the game. If you don't play the game, you know, how can you pretend like you're an expert on it? I don't want to repeat myself again, you know, they have the right to their opinion, but it's like I said, I have the right to criticize them as well. So they can not play the game, and they can speak their mind on it, but I also have the right to criticize them, and I also have the right to say, I think it's stupid that you are criticizing a game like this and defending a company when you have not even bothered to play the game. And the way I see this is, imagine if I, I started going to, like, different YouTube channels, like sports YouTube channels, and, like, Take-Two Interactive also publishes NBA which NB the NBA 2K games. The NBA 2K games have had a lot of controversy, for instance, with loot boxes. Imagine if I just started going to different, like, YouTube channels that, like, uh, complain or, like, rant about, like, the loot box problem, which it, it is a massive problem. You know, Take-Two Interactive is very greedy with their monetization um, practices. Imagine I just started going to these channels and I started, like, leaving comments and I started saying, oh, well, you guys in the NBA 2K community, you guys shouldn't be complaining about the loot boxes because the loot boxes, that's good for Take-Two Interactive. It makes them more money. And so 
So it, therefore, it's the correct business decision to have these in, and you guys will get better games because of it if I started making comments like that. And these people would look at my comments, and I'd look like a total buffoon in that. I would. And these people would say, hey, you know, you don't even play NBA. Why are you coming in here and constantly making comments on this, defending Take-Two on this? And I would say, oh, well, you know, I play other games that Take-Two Interactive publishes. You know, I play GTA and I play Reddit Online, so, you know, I'm giving my opinion here. You see? You see how stupid this is? So, if you basically, my point here is, I'm not trying to slander anyone. I'm not trying to insult anyone. That's not my purpose. I don't do stuff like this. But I'm just saying, from the perspective of Red Dead players, a lot of Red Dead Online players get pissed off by this. That people that don't even play the game, bar or barely played it, they haven't even finished the online story, act like they're experts on the game. They act like they know everything about the game. They, they, they tell you that, that the game wouldn't have had any content because there's only so much you can do in a Wild West game when they don't even know how detailed and, and uh, how much potential the Reddit Online world is. They don't know how much potential Reddit Online has, and yet they act like they're experts on the game. So that's basically my point right there, is that people that don't play the game... Um, are just constantly being judge judgmental on it and trying to criticize the Red Dead community when the Red Dead community, all they want is they just want the basically similar support to what GT Online wants. That's it. You know, in the Red Dead community, you know, we, we don't hate GT Online. You know, I, I, I have heard people say, oh, you know, Red Dead Online players hate GT Online. They want GT Online to be canceled. That's not true. I can't speak for everyone. I'm sure there are Red Dead players that hate GT Online. I don't hate GT Online personally. Hell, I even got back into GT Online. I'm doing it again on my channel, and it's because I can stream in in um, in friend sessions and sell businesses, and I don't have to worry about griefers. GT Online is a great game, and I have a lot of fun with it. But but this idea that the vast majority of Red Dead players like hate GTA, and there's like some conspiracy of them wanting Rockstar to cancel GT Online to focus on Red Dead Online, that's just not true. That's just not. The vast majority of Red Dead Online players, you know, a lot of them also play GTA, but we just want the game to have this equal support. We want the game to have equal coverage. That's it. We, When GTA releases a big update, we want a big update on Red Dead Online at the same time. That's it. We don't hate GTA Online. It's just that when the reason that we compare Red Dead Online and GTA Online a lot is not because we hate GTA Online, but the reason that we compare the two games is because they're made by the same company, they're both supported by the same company, and we look at it when Red Dead Online gets this small garbage update, you know, with bag missions called the Blood Money DLC, but then you look at you look at GT Online and get the, they get the Tuners DLC, and then in December of 2021, GT Online get uh, GT Online gets the Contract DLC. They, they get Franklin to come back, and they get like a whole new business. And what does Reddit Online get? Reddit Online gets absolutely nothing, no update, no content, nothing. Even the Criminal Enterprises DLC, even that had way more content than what Reddit Online got. What did Reddit Online get? Three Telegram missions, seriously? So when, when I see these people like, you know, trying to slander the Reddit Online community and trying to paint the Reddit Online community as haters, it's just not true. We just want the same content and the same support that GT Online has gotten. Why is that so hard to understand? We don't want GT Online to be canceled. We don't hate GT Online players. We just want the game to have equal support as GTA. Is that really such a bad thing? And why are people so against that? And why are people constantly defending a company? They're constantly defending a greedy company that doesn't care about you. Well, my, my, my question would be to these people is like, why are you constantly bringing up that, that business decision? Why are you constantly talking about that? Why? What, what, it, what is the purpose here? Are you trying to somehow change Red Dead Online um, players' uh, players' minds? If you hate Red Dead Online and you hate, like, you know, the Save Red Dead Online movement, I don't see why you don't just ignore it. You know, you just block people that like that talk about you. You block their comments so you don't see them. You block their accounts if they're on Twitter so they can't tweet at you. And you just ignore it. It's as simple as that. I mean, I can't stand GTA 6 spam. I can't. Like, when I see, like, you know, I see clickbaiters on YouTube constantly talking about GTA 6 crap, I hate that. And it's not that I hate G GTA 6, but I hate clickbait. I hate rumors that they're unreliable. I, I see these stupid GTA 6 comments, you know, where's GTA 6, like, on Rockstar's Twitter. But yet, I don't constantly go and debate these people, and I don't constantly, like, leave comments and just say to these people, oh, you know, you're stupid, you don't know what you're talking about, GTA, there's no evidence that any of these leaks are true. I don't do that. I don't, I don't go to these clickbait channels. I don't go there and start arguments. I just ignore it. I just say, you know what, this is stupid. I'm just gonna ignore it. So I don't understand for the people that, the people that say that Save Reddit Online is stupid, and they don't like the, um, and they think the Reddit Online community is toxic, why don't you just ignore them? Why do you go, go to such great lengths to defend like a greedy company that literally releases the definitive edition of, of, of GTA, you know, a classics, what, one of the biggest games of my childhood, GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas, and literally 
completely ruins it with just so many glitches. A company that a company that that monetizes and creates a subscription service literally eight and a half years after the game's been released, and you're gonna defend a company like this seriously? Why? That's my question. Why? And this brings me to my final point. which is that abandoning Red Dead Online is going to hurt Rockstar in the long run, and Rockstar is going to lose money from this. You know, you hear people talking about how it's not profitable to support Red Dead Online and that Rockstar isn't going to make any money, and blah blah blah, it's the correct business decision. After all, that's what this whole documentary was about, was countering these, these arguments that people are making. But what these people making these arguments, what they're not thinking about is they're not thinking about the long run. Like I've said before in this documentary, people just look at what's happening right now. They see, oh, Reddit Online does not have those numbers, and so there it makes sense for Rockstar to cancel it. However, though, do you know who also has been paying attention a lot? The Reddit Online community and the Reddit Redemption community. Even though Reddit Online does not have that, that many players and it's losing more and more players because Rockstar abandoned it, a lot of people have gotten off the game. But even though they've gotten off the game, they haven't forgotten what Rockstar has done. And there was some, you know, some fans that have stood with the game until the very end, which is right around here. And these fans who have stood till the very end basically was their last straw with what Rockstar has done. Now, what do I mean? How is Rockstar going to lose money for abandoning Red Dead Online? Remember what I said earlier about customer loyalty and that you want to build good relations with your customers and sometimes you, you should take a loss if you're going to to avoid having an even bigger loss later on? Well, take a look at this. This is actually a poll, and these are some of those um, stats that I was talking to you guys about. I made this poll on my channel about two months ago. And in this poll right here, I asked people, and I asked people who are only Reddit Online players, people who played Reddit Online, played it in the past, you know, just played it a decent amount. What do you guys think right now? Are you guys ever going to buy shark cards, gold bars, GTA Plus? Will you buy any kind of Rockstar microtransaction? Now, most people are going to buy probably GTA 6. I'm not denying that. Like I said, I'll buy GTA 6 as well because I am actually looking forward to the next Grand Theft Auto game. But what I will never do personally is I will never buy a shark card. I will never buy a gold bar. I will never buy GTA Plus. I, to be fair, I wasn't buying those beforehand, but I was kind of indifferent to them. But now... Ever since what Rockstar has done with Reddit Online, I literally support a complete boycott on all of this stuff. On the shark cards, the GTA Plus, the gold bars, all of that stuff. And a lot of other people feel that way. So I had 33,000 people vote in this poll. And I asked people, what do you think? 60% of those 33,000 said, I will never buy a shark card, gold bar, or GTA Plus. And 32%, because I wanted to see how many people were still buying them, 32% actually said, I bought them at one point, but will never again. These were players that bought microtransactions from you, Rockstar, in the past, and now they're not going to. And their main reason why is because of you screwed over Red Dead Online. You abandoned this game. You betrayed the Red Dead Online community. And when people say, when people say that it's not greed what Rockstar has done, this is greed. Just because they did it supposedly for business does not make it any less greedy. It's still greedy, and it's scummy what they have done. And if you take at those 33,000 people, 32% of that would be around 10,000 people. So around 10,000 people, according to my poll, are never going to buy shark cards, GTA Plus, or um, gold bars anymore. These are people that had purchased it previously. They just lost 10,000 customers. And this is my poll, only just for my poll, for my channel. Now, I know I'm going to have people that are going to say, like I said earlier, that this is your community, so they are going to agree with you. Ask the average Reddit Online player. You'll see the average Reddit Online player is not happy with Rockstar. I cannot imagine any Reddit talking to any Reddit Online player and then telling having a good image of Rockstar. Pretty much universally from what I've seen in the Reddit community, either people don't care or they, they're really pissed off at Rockstar. It's almost one of the two. I don't see anyone that has a positive opinion in Rockstar in the Reddit Online community. Maybe I haven't met them, but I have not seen anyone that really has a positive view of Rockstar in the Reddit, Reddit Online community. And so this number, I'm telling you, is much higher. It's much higher than my poll, because that's only people that watch my channel. But in the entire Red Dead um, community, 
there is this number would be much more there's gonna be a lot more people that are not going to buy shark cards they're not going to buy gta plus they're not going to buy gold bars and it's directly because of this and if you're one of those people that constantly say that what rockstar did abandoning reddit online was good for business well then you also have to admit that this is bad for business losing this many customers people some people would say oh 10 000 customers it's just a dent it's like i said this number is much higher because this is only my poll and i truly think that I truly think that Rockstar has lost a lot of customers. It's like I said, they should have developed this game, they should have still made content for this game, even if it wasn't that profitable, just to keep the Red Dead Online community happy and to show the customers that they care to retain those customers. But Rockstar has tarnished their reputation over time. And Rockstar is not the same developer that they once were. You know, with the GTA Definitive Edition, you guys saw it earlier, literally it was stupid. I, I That's when I was playing San Andreas, you know, last year. And what happened was, I was literally stuck in, um, I was stuck in cutscenes, I couldn't progress through certain parts of the game, I even had a glitch where I got thrown across, smashed into an island, and I died. And this is just only a few glitches. This, the definitive edition of GTA was a massive disaster. It was just terrible. We got so hyped up for it, we got so excited, but it was disaster, because... Rockstar or the CEOs at Take Two, somebody at the top had rushed it. Now I know that Grove Street Games were the ones who developed it, and I'll have people defending Rockstar and say, "Oh, it's not their fault. It's Grove Street Games." Oh yeah, well, who gave Grove Street Games the green light to make the GTA Definitive Edition? Do you honestly think that people at Rockstar were not overseeing this project? Do you think that people at Rockstar did not know about the state of of the GTA Definitive Edition? I highly doubt it. I think that they knew. I think they knew about it. They just rushed it out, but. It, it turned out that the community had a massive backlash to it, and I don't think that they were expecting that at least. And if you want to know how bad Rockstar actually is at business, well then take a look at this. These were leaks, but they do have some credibility behind them. And that is that the GTA 4 and Red Dead Redemption 1 remasters were actually cancelled. These were remasters that Rockstar had. If Rockstar had released these remasters, I guarantee you they would have made tons of money. I wanted to play GTA 4 on the PS5 with PC graphics for so long. I've always wanted to do that. But it's not being released. Why? Because of the, the reception to the GTA Definitive Edition. That's how stupid Rockstar is. They think that people don't want remasters because of what happened to the Definitive Edition. The reason that the Definitive Edition had such backlash wasn't because people didn't want remasters. People did want remasters. People just didn't want glitchy, buggy, unfinished, broken remasters. That's the whole point. And because of that logic, Rockstar somehow thinks that people don't want remasters anymore. They're stupid. If you want to know how much Rockstar has fallen, just look at their response to the GTA Definitive Edition. What did Rockstar do during that? They just posted a simple paragraph. A simple paragraph talking about how they're going to also, you know, bring the game back for PC players and that it's not, you know, some of their best work and that they apologize for it really seriously, this is the best that they can do? You know what I would have preferred? I would have preferred if Sam Hauser himself actually made a video, and Sam Hauser in that video actually said, I want to apologize to all the Rockstar fan base. I want to apologize for the state of the GTA Definitive Edition. This is not how we normally do things. We should do better, and I will give you guys my word that we will do better on that. That's what I would have liked to see from Sam Hauser, you know, the, the head at Rockstar right now, but I don't see that. I instead see, you know, a garbage, um, you know, paragraph here with, you know, a half-written apology, and guess what? what they stopped updating the gta definitive edition they completely forgot about it while it is better than what it was at launch to be fair still has a ton of problems they've forgotten about it this is a this is a developer a developer that literally when one guy had actually asked about the state of gta definitive edition he contacted support he asked them about it well guess what rockstar support completely ignored him they didn't reply to him but the second another person Another person, he asked about shark cards. Immediately got a response from Rockstar. And I think it's because they have some kind of flagging system. And that system detects the word shark cards, but not the word glitches. And so they detected the word shark card because, of course, that's their revenue right there. And responded right away to it. And it said, oh, blah, 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 this. But then the guy, it was great. Because he actually responded back, and he actually said, well, how about we talk about the state of Reddit Online, where he got no response. It was just a way to get Rockstar to respond. He did a pretty good job of it. This is not the Rockstar that I grew up with. 
it isn't anymore. And just as I've said throughout the entire, you know, Red Dead documentary, you know, I'm not here to start drama, I'm not here to start arguments with people, I'm not a toxic guy. The point of this documentary was simple. You know, I'm not even really ranting about Reddit Online anymore, I've, I've pretty much given up. You know, I don't think that there's, my goal here is not to get Rockstar to make more content for Reddit Online because there's no changing their minds. They're completely, um, uh, they're, they're completely set on just um, focusing on GTA 6 and GTA Online. They've abandoned Reddit Online, a game that hasn't even been supported for full, uh, four full years for a game that has had eight years, um, almost nine years of content at this point. And it's like I said, it's not, I don't hate GTA Online. I don't have anything against it personally. You know, that's not my problem, but when I see that GT Online, a game that's, you know, you know, so much older and getting so much more content and the game that's newer, you know, pisses me off and it pisses off a lot of other Red Dead players. That all we want is we wanted communication and we just wanted similar sized updates to what GTA has gotten. That's it. And the Red Dead community would have been happy with that, but what Rockstar has done, this is just absolute garbage. This is just terrible. And even if, even if by some ridiculous chance, even if, you know, Rockstar, you know, was not going to make any money at all for Reddit Online and that everything that I'm saying is just absolute nonsense, you cannot sit there and tell me that they could not have at least released one final DLC. Just one. One final DLC for the Reddit community. Just something to thank them for playing Reddit Online. Just even one thing. But they couldn't even do that. They gave us three Telegram missions. That was their best? Seriously? That's what they gave us? And say no more major updates? If you want to know how much of a terrible company Rockstar is, guess what? The Reddit Online actually had a story. It did. It actually had its own story. It's when you were broken out of prison at the when you first made your character, and your character was actually framed for a murder, framed for Jessica LeClerc's husband's murder. And you helped Jessica LeClerc chase down the vast majority of the conspirators. But there was only one conspirator left, Grace Lansing. And that cliffhanger has not been answered for three years. For three years, that cliffhanger has not been answered. The final conspirator. We don't know exactly what happened with her husband. You know, who's in on this conspiracy? Most of the people are dead, but the final conspirator, Grace Lansing, has not been brought to justice. And I actually enjoyed the Red Dead Online story mode. I actually thought it was good. And so was the Moonshine story mode. The Moonshine story mode was pretty good. These had potential. Typically in online games, the story isn't that good, but these stories were actually really good. And a lot of people in the Red Dead community wanted a simple ending to this storyline. And for three years, they have not answered the storyline. You cannot sit there and tell me that they could not have at least finished the storyline. At least one final DLC for the Reddit community. Give them something that they want. Give them houses, you know, bank robberies, train robberies, some like one big DLC. If you're not going to support this game, then at least do one final big DLC and then be done with it. But don't leave it in this state. Don't leave it like this. Just telling after, you know, for so long, for, you know, seven months of just ignoring your community, of just people that are passionate getting together and we're just hoping for content after all that time. You just tell people, no more major updates. You can't even be bothered to make one final DLC for the fans. Something to at least, you know, leave off on a good on a good record with them. Something, give them houses, give them robberies. Actual robberies, not blood money, garbage bag missions. Maybe finish the Jessica LeClerc storyline. Rockstar could not even be bothered to do that. Not even that. Not even one final DLC. I'm sure, even the, I'm sure that even the people that defend Rockstar would at least have to agree with me that they could have done at least one final DLC for the fans. That's how, that's how Rockstar has no respect whatsoever for their fans. What's the point of the feedback page, really? What's the point of it, Rockstar? People have given you ideas for years, and you haven't listened to it at all. You give people things like Naturalist. You give people things like Blood Money, things that people don't want. It's not what people want in the DLC. People gave you plenty of ideas. You just chose not to listen to it. And that's pretty much it for this documentary, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Again, this was, I wasn't trying to make this into a rant against Rockstar. It was more of, you know, try to convince people. And if I can, you know, if I can convince at least one person, just one person to think differently about this, then I'll consider this, you know, a success. If I can convince one person to stop defending Rockstar, I'll consider this documentary a success. And also, at the end, I'm going to have people that are going to accuse me of hating Rockstar, but... I don't even really hate Rockstar. Rockstar isn't my favorite isn't my favorite company anymore. I've lost a lot of respect for them, but I don't even hate them. I kind of dislike them, but it's not hate. But the, if for all the problems that that Rockstar has caused Red Dead Online, and you know all, some of the scummy things that they've done, like GTA Plus abandoning Red Dead Online, the state of the GTA Definitive Edition, and, you know, there's even more than that. For all the you know the scummy things that they've done, 
I have nothing against the average Rockstar developer. The average Rockstar developer, I have no nothing against them because the average Rockstar developer is not responsible for this nonsense that's going on. They're not. The, and I'm sure there's a lot of Rockstar developers that want to work on Red Dead Online. They spend so much time on this game and they've wanted to make content for it. But who do I blame? I don't blame the average Rockstar developer. I blame people like Sam Hauser. I blame people like Strauss Zelnick. Why did people like Dan Hauser leave? We don't know the reason for it. Leslie Benzies left. Lazlo left. A lot of the good people that made up Rockstar in the past are gone. They're not there anymore. So I blame the people at the top. I blame the people in charge that are responsible for this mess. It's just probably a bunch of stupid corporate suits that are sitting in a boardroom and they're seeing that Reddit Online is not making massive profits right away when they don't realize it's a game that you take. It takes time to, to develop. It takes time to. It takes over time. You make money from it. It's not something that you're gonna put out one update and make a ton of money. Imagine if Rockstar made a map expansion for Reddit Online. It would take them some time to make it, but imagine if they actually made a map expansion. Imagine if they did something like a Mexico DLC. They have the layout from Red Dead Redemption 1. It's already across from New Austin. They could do an actual Mexico map expansion. They could bring back a lot of the characters um, from Mexico in Red Dead Redemption 1. They could do a ton of missions there, some new properties. It would be a massive DLC. It would take a long time to develop, don't get me wrong. But if they released something like that, you would have thousands of people jump on this game if we had a Mexico map expansion. I guarantee you, if you had something like Undead Nightmare, you'd have even more people that would jump on it. Even the people that hate Reddit Online and only play the single player, even they would get on Reddit Online just to play a map expansion. So don't tell me that this game doesn't have potential. It does have potential. And this leads me to my final point, which is why did Rockstar really abandon Reddit Online? What's the reasoning for it? What's the reasoning for it? Why do I think Rockstar abandoned Reddit Online? Well, in my opinion, from everything that I've seen, the, the main reason that Rockstar abandoned Reddit Online, it's not because of greed. Greed is the second uh, reason. The number one reason why Rockstar abandoned Reddit Online, in my opinion, is laziness. Why laziness? Why? Think about it this way. Rockstar needs to develop content for Reddit Online. They know it's, it can be profitable. They know, they remember on the Nightmare Part 1. They know how much money that they brought in. They know if they make an Undead Nightmare Part 2, it could bring in a lot of money. They know if they make a Mexico Web expansion, it could bring in a lot of money. But to make DLCs like that, it's going to take some time. And they don't want to do that. Instead, they just look at it and they think, you know what? Why don't we just milk GT Online? We already have a player base on there. We have tons of people buying shark cards. We don't need to put hard work into making Red Dead Online content. Instead, we can just release a DLC every six months on GT Online, one in the summertime and one in the wintertime, and we'll make plenty of money from shark cards. And also, we can just put in GTA Plus and try to replace our Red Dead Online fans with it. That's at least the way that I see it. I think that it's laziness. I think that's the number one reason. Not greed. Greed is part of it, but I think it's laziness. I think they don't feel like developing content for it. They're saying that it's a waste of time, and so they're just deciding to just milk GT Online pretty much until the end of time. And that is um, pretty much it for this video. And like I said, GT Online is not going to last forever. I think eventually they're going to run out of content. And I think it's just a really bad idea just to have everything based on GT Online. Recently, you know, we had the, uh, the, the GTA 6 leaks, which I actually do really feel bad for the Rockstar developers. I do that put a lot of hard work into that only for their hard work just to be leaked like that by some scumbag hacker. But this is also why it's important that you have diversified income and you don't base your entire income on just Grand with auto. You know, they could have been making plenty of money from Red Dead Online right now if they actually had grown a community on it, but they chose not to. They abandoned the community, they abandoned the fans, they betrayed the uh, Red Dead Online community, they didn't respond to them. One of the worst developers when it comes to communication. I just have no respect for Rockstar really as a company anymore. Like I said, I don't have anything against the regular devs. I respect the regular devs, but the, the company itself, the people in charge, not really anymore. After what they've done to Reddit Online, you have an obligation to your fans. Not everything is just always not everything is always about money. You're a billion dollar studio rockstar. You got plenty of resources. You know, have some honor. Have some integrity. Your fans are very passionate about this game. You promised that you'd put 100% of your effort into the uh, online, and you didn't even do that. Well, and that is pretty much it for this this documentary, guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like. And um, if you do, do agree with what I say in this documentary, if you agree with my points, please do share this video. Please share it with other people. I'm hoping this video can at least get 100,000 views. If this video gets at least 100,000 views, that'll at least make me really happy that it, you know, it got so much attention and that so many people in the Reddit community still care and that other people care. But one final note that I'll say about this is even if you are not a Reddit Online player, if you, even if you've never played Reddit Online, what Rockstar did to Reddit Online, every single person in the Rockstar community should have been against what Rockstar did to Reddit Online. Everybody should have been united. That's how I feel. I don't think people should have been trying to slander the Reddit Online fans and defending Rockstar. I think everybody should have been united because what Rockstar did was just absolute scummy to the Reddit Online community.
And fans should have banded together whether you were a Reddit Online fan or not. Because look at what happened to GTA Online next. GTA Online got GTA Plus. So I think, honestly, fans should stick together and they should, they should stand up for what's right. Because what Rockstar did I, that, to the Reddit Online community is just completely unforgivable. But thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys. You're late. I'm not paying for those.